National Conference on Education Technology on Social Sciences, ICTESS uh, 2022. Uh, so the theme that we are raised today is uh, human capital in the first new paradigm of industrial revolution 4.0. Actually, this conference will be held uh, for two days, uh, starting for today and Friday until tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, uh, 25 to uh, 26, uh, 20, 2022. Before we start in the opening ceremony, let me introduce first our team today. Uh, we have uh, four moderators. Uh, the first, uh, Dr. Nur Aini MPD from State University of Makassar. And we have Abdul Wafi MPD uh, from State Islamic uh, Institute Madura. And we have Dr. Muhammad uh, Nur, Dr. Nur Fadila, SPDM Home from State uh, University, State Islamic University of Loksmawe. And then uh, Santiana SSMPD from uh, Siliwangi University of Indonesia. And I welcome to uh, our uh, President of Indo Indonesian Education Share to Care Volunteer, Dr. Abdul Ghafur MPD, and also as a uh, member of uh, staff in State Islamic University of uh, Madura. Uh, I welcome to uh, Professor Tariq Elias, a Professor of Applied Linguistics at King Abdul Aziz University in Saudi Arabia, and also our keynote speaker today, Professor Muhammad Basri Jafar, MA PhD, uh, so the head of doctoral program, English Language Department, State University of Makassar. And I uh, welcome Professor Dr. Akhtam uh, Desi Lihov uh, in Department of uh, Advertising, Public Relationship, and Publishing Institute of Media Communication, Media Technology, and Design uh, in uh, Fernadek. Uh, Crimean Federal University, Russia, and uh, Dr. Amitabh Pikran Dwi Fedi from the Faculty of School of Languages and Literature and uh, Chairperson Media Cell at Sri Mata uh, Devi University, India, and uh, Mr. David De Prodin, English Language Specialist, Institute for Population and Social Research, Mehidol University, Bangkok, Thailand, and Engineering Dr. Muhammad Mushtaba Asr, the Head of Education and Technology and TVT Research at Sukur IBA University, Pakistan, and Dr. Fang Fang, Fan, Associate Professor from the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature College of Liberal Art, Shatou University, China, and Prodan uh, Mahbub. Ibn Siraj from American International University, Bangladesh. Uh, for the next agenda, I give please to the, our moderator, uh, Ibu Santiana SSMPD from uh, Siliwangi University, Tanshir. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Andia Sifan. Tanshir, please, the agenda will begin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, 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 Bagi kita semua, salam Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, salam kebajikan. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin, wassalatu wassalamu ala asrafil anbiya wal salin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Amma ba'du. The honorable chairperson of Patala Palalo Foundation, Bapak Dr. Andi Asrifan MPD. The honorable president of Indonesian Education Charitable Volunteers, Bapak Dr. Abdul Gopur. MPD and the advisors of Indonesian Education Child to Care Volunteer, Ibu Dr. Mutmaina MPD, the Honorable Rectors of Universitas Al Arsar Yahmandar, Universitas Muhammadiyah Sindang Rengrapa, IAIN Madura, Universitas Siliwangi, IAIN Loksmawe, and State University of Makassar, the Honorable keynote speakers, Professor Tariq Elias from King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia. Professor Muhammad Basri Jafar, MA PhD from State University Makassar, Indonesia, and Professor Dr. Ahtem Adelilov, Fadinat Kremen Federal University, Russia, and the honorable invited speaker, Dr. Amitabh Vikram Divedi from Srimata Vishnu Davi University, India, 
Mr. David Dapardin from Mahido University, Bangkok, Thailand. Dr. Muhammad uh, Mustafa Asad from Sukur uh, IBA University, Pakistan. Dr. Fan Fang from Central University, China, and Pradhan Mahbud Ibn Siraj from American International University, Bangladesh. The committee, Indonesian Education Charter Volunteers members, participant, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Very good afternoon to all of you. First of all, we would like to thank God for blessing us with the opportunity so that we can gather here to attend the wonderful occasion virtually, the International Conference on Education, Technology and Social Sciences 2022 with the theme, Human Capital in Facing New Paradigm of Industrial Revolution 4.0, which is held collaboratively by Potala Palalo Foundation, Uni uh, Universitas al Asia Mandat, Universitas Muhammadiyah Sideng Reng Rapang, IAIN Madura, Universitas Siluangi, IAIN Laksmawe, State University of Makassar, and Indonesian Education Shared to Care Volunteers. On behalf of the committee, it's my great pleasure and also my honor to be able to extend our warmest welcome to you all. Lomia Fasantiana from Siluang University will be in charge of guiding you all in the opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to education, Shared to Care Volunteer is volunteers community brought together from several corporations to advance the world education. We provide several experts in various fields of study to become speakers at national and international forum. We also facilitate an overview with domestic and foreign institution in education development, research and community services. The NMU intend to establish cooperation in both education and academic exchange to have mutual benefit for respective institution. The Cassander academic exchange includes developments of mutually beneficial academic and training program, exchange of faculty and staff for teaching, research and extension purposes, Repoxical session for visiting academic faculty, staff, and students, coordinations of such activities as the joint research and transfers of technology, and exchange of documentation and research materials in the fields of mutual interest. In the future, we will continue to gather volunteers from various fields of study, both domestic and foreign, to jointly develop the qualities of world education. So we also want to invite all of the participants in our institution to develop, to continue to assist in achieving its vision. And with this vision and mission, we invite all domestic and foreign institution and organization who wants to cooperate with Indonesian education share to get volunteers. Ladies and gentlemen, the International Conference on Education, Technology and Social Sciences 2021 with the theme, Human Capital in Facing New Paradigms of Industrial Revolution 4.0 will be held for two days from 25 to 26 March, 2022. And these activities are carried out through a Zoom meeting application and also YouTube live streaming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this special afternoon, we have two agenda. The first is the opening ceremony, which includes singing the national anthem in Indonesia Raya, the opening remarks, the creative dance performance and closing, and the second one is the keynote speaker session. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let's open this agenda. We are reciting Basmala together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next agenda, singing the national anthem of Republic of Indonesia. Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, are pleased to check your position.
Ladies and gentlemen, step on the following agenda are the opening remark. For the first opening remark would be delivered by the advisors of Indonesian Education Center Care Volunteers, Ibu Dr. Mutmat Nina, MPD. Please. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Happy good day. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Happy good day, everyone, and welcome to our international conference. His Excellency, the Chairman, Founder, and CEO of Patola Palala Foundation, Dr. Andia Sripan, the Honorable, our keynote speaker, Professor Tariq Elias, Professor of Applied Linguistics at King Abdul Aziz University, King Saudi Arabia, our Professor Muhammad Basri Jabbar, MA, PhD, Head of Doctoral Program, English Language Department, State University of Makassar, Indonesia, Professor Dr. Ahtem E. De Zilov, Zililov, Department of Advertising, Public Relation, and Publishing, Institute of Media Communication, Media Technology, and Design, Vladimir Ivanovich Bernanatsky, Premier Federal University, Russia. All of our invited speaker, Dr. Amita Vikram Divedi, Faculty of School of Language and Literature and Chairperson Media Cell at Sri Mata Prisno Devi University, India. Engineering Dr. Muhammad Muttaba Asad, Head of Educational Technology and TPIT Research at Sukhul. ABA University, Pakistan. Mr. David Perwadin, English Language Specialist, Institute for Population and Social Research, Mahidol University, Bangkok, Thailand. Dr. Fang Fang, Associate Professor, Department of Foreign Language and Literature, College of Liberal Arts, Santo University, China. Rodan Mahmud Ibn Sherat, American International University, Bangladesh. And also our a beautiful and handsome moderator, my sister, Dr. Noraini MPD from State University of Makassar, Indonesia, Abdul Wafi from IIN Madura, Dr. Nurul Fadila, SPD M. Hun from Yang Lok Sumawe, and Dr. Santiana, SSMPD Universitas Siliwangi. Welcome to all of the participants in this our conference, as well as all the participants from all around the world. Welcome to our virtual conference held or organized by Yayasan Patola Palalo, as well as all the participants. Welcome to our conference. And this is organized by seven universities in Indonesia, collaborate with Share to Care Volunteer under the Patola Palala Foundation. We are seven university, doctoral program State University of Makassar, Indonesia, State Islamic Institute of Majura, State Islamic Institute of Lok Sumawe, Siliwangi University, Universitas al Asyariah Mandar, Indonesia, Universitas Muhammadiyah Sidenggeng Rapang, and Stiba Durul Ulum Banyuanyar, Pamekasan, Indonesia. Let us first all of all give thanks to President of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, God the Most Gracious and Merciful, because of His permission today we can gather here to join together in attending our international conference on education, technology, and social science 2020, and this is called Paper under the theme Human Capital in Facing New Paradigm of Industrial Revolution 4.0. So all of our subtopic, business administration, human resource management, public policy, public administration, marketing, politic, political marketing, educational technology, accounting, economic communication, creative industry, language teaching and evaluation, applied linguistic and other relevant subjects. The conference is held today from today, March to 25 until tomorrow, uh, 26. Uh, start at 2 uh, p.m. UTC, 8 Singapore time. And there will be about uh, eight keynote speakers from seven different countries and 20 presenters will be share their, uh, their best ideas and insights related to the topic. 
And we report there are 11 countries participate and register to attending our international conference. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> in face of the technological change derived from industry 4.0 and initial gradual and complex process of technology transfer or TT is taking place that strong relief on the integration between university, industry, and government. In this context, in order to make the industry 4.0 approach a reality, several requirements need to be met. One of them is the need to qualify people to work in industry. So according to several <clears throat> study, we know that an essential requirement for industry 4.0 is the qualification of the people whose participation will be vital with no substitution of human labor for artificial intelligence taking place. What will occur is tax registration. This, uh, this is the people will perform other tasks such as the programming of robots, an assembly line, system operation, supervision, and decision making. So we know that the concept of industry 4.0 scenario, this is about the management of human resource is one of the most important elements. In, in industry 4.0, human work will be modified and the change to be made still require more scientific discussion, which highlight the importance of studies on this regard. So the macro analysis of human skill, of human skill and competencies for industry 4.0 is an essential and essential step for ET technology transfer to take back between the university, industry, and government. So we do really hope that qualifying people for work is one of the primary requirements and can be considered as challenge for industry, research institution, and government. So we do really hope all of the keynote speaker and invited speaker will be giving give to us their excellent knowledge about uh, 4.0 and, and industry in industry sector, certain human companies, and text might stand out from other. And also we do really hope. Uh, by this, uh, the macro analysis of competency is relevant scientific contribution because it enables to creation of branch of competency as well as improve the qualification of people according to the reality in this digital era. Finally, congratulations on participating in the International Conference on Education, Technology and Social Science 2020. Uh, probably what we do today will be beneficial for Indonesian progress and all the country in the world. Stay safe and healthy. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Ibu Dr. Mutmaina. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite the presidents of Indonesian Education Charitable Volunteers Bapak Dr. Abdul Gafur MPD to deliver the second opening remarks. The gym floor is yours. Thank you, um, Teh Eva, for our chance. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam um, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon from Indonesia and Honorable Rectors of Makassar University, Honorable Directors of Postgraduate Program of Universitas Negeri Makassar, Honorable Founders of Palalu Foundation, my brother Dr. Andi Asrifan, MPD, and all my team in Indonesian Share to Care Volunteers. Honorable Rector from several universities in Indonesia who already support this conference. Also, Honorable All Resource Persons and all students from all over the world. My deepest gratitude to the Rector of Universitas Negeri Makassar who's supporting today's event, namely International Conference on Education. Technology and Social Science 2022 that's going to hold for today so from 25 of March up to 26 of March 2022. It is such an honor for us Indonesian Shadow Care Volunteers to collaborate in holding this kind of conference. Ladies and gentlemen and all the participants of the conference. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, praise um, to the presence of God Almighty because on this day we can together 
in this Zoom platform of University of uh, Makassar, Indonesia, to have a wonderful conference. Praise and also greeting may remain expressed to the Lord for the success of this conference, in which for this afternoon, let me say thanks to our keynote speakers, Professor Tariq Elias from King Adulaziz University, Professor Basri Jafar, MAPhD, the head of the doctor program English Language Department at the University of Makassar, Indonesia. Professor Dr. Athims, Department of Advertising, Public Relations and Publishing, Institute of Media Communication, Media Technology and Design, University Krem, Kremian Federal University, Russia. And my brother, Dr. Amitabh Vikram Vedi, the faculty of School of Language and Literature, and also chairperson of Media Cell at Sri Mata Vaishnav Devi University, India. My brother, Dr. Engineering Muhammad Mujtaba Asad, head of Educational Technology and Feds Research at Sukur Iba University, Pakistan. My brother, Mr. David D. Perodins. How are you, sir? For English Language Specialist Institute for Publishing and Social Research, Maidot University, Bangkok, Thailand. Dr. Fan Fang, Associate Professor, Department of um, Foreign Language and Literature College at Liberal Art, Santo University, China. Prodan Mahbub Ibn Suraj, American International University, Bangladesh, for sparing all the time for to, um, this afternoon and knowledge for us, for the equation, and also for the world. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, as academic culture, this event is going to have a good contribution for the people of the world and for all experts to share and care about um, the topic is given. And also um, for our mankind in good orders. Hopefully this conference will be running well and success. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda is creative dance performance. Um, I guess connection happened. 
that connection in bearing and yeah i think it's like internet problems so should we continue to the next agenda i guess so because yes. it's already one thirty. all right all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have been through a series of events together and we are now at the conclusion of the opening ceremony. Allow me, Pasantiana, as the Masters of Ceremony, would like to express my apology for the inconvenience during the opening, uh, the opening session. Finally, let's close the opening ceremony by saying alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Billahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have to come to the keynote speaker session, which would be the highlights of this program, the International Conference of Education, Technology and Social Sciences 2022, which is the theme, Human Capital in Facing New Paradigms of Industrial Revolution 4.0, which is held collaboratively between state universities of Makassar, Indonesia, and Patala Palalo Foundation, Universitas Al Asyariah Mandar, Universitas Muhammadiyah Sidang Rengrapang, IAIN Madura, Universitas Siluangi, IAIN Loksmawe, and Indonesian Education Sharp to Friendships. And today, we have three great keynote speakers who will be sharing their opinion. They are Professor Tariq Elias from King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia, Professor Muhammad Basri Zafar, ME PhD from State University of Makassar, Indonesia, and Professor Dr. Aten Adelilov from Pnatsky Kremen Federal University, Russia. And to guide the first and second keynote speaker, Dr. Nur Fadila from IAIN Loksmawe will serve as the moderator. Dr. Nur Fadila, the Zoom floor is yours. Thank you very much. Am I audible right now? Clear enough. Yep. Thank you very much for the opportunity for, after, uh, for the after Master of Ceremony. Thank you very much, Tehfa. Um, welcome all of the keynote speakers and also the invited speakers and my beloved participants today uh, in our conference, uh, International Conference on Education, Technology, and Social Science, Sciences. Um, with the theme Human Capital in Facing New Paradigm of Industrial Revolution 4.0. Um, I would like to inform you that today I will um, lead um, two of our keynote speakers, Professor Tariq Elias and also Professor Muhammad Basri Jafar, MA PhD. Um, did I, do I have you here, Professor Tariq Elias, already? Yes, I'm here. Thank you so much. Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Are you here, Professor yes, Tarik Ilyas? Yes, I'm here. Yes, can you hear me? I have seen Professor Tarik Ilyas just now in the screen. The screen. Yes, I am ah, here. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I can hear you now. Yes, yes, I can hear you. All right, thank you so um, much, Professor Tarik Ilyas. Let me introduce you first. That you are a professor of applied linguistics at King Abdul Aziz University. Yes. Uh, no more sound. Yes. Uh, should I start the session right now? Uh, I can't hear you anymore. Uh, hello. Yeah, I think uh, she got a uh, internet problem. Yeah, got disconnected. Yeah, hello. I'm here. <laughs> I'm so sorry because. I was out <laughs> for a moment. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> already... <laughs> it's okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. Me Take your time. Second. It happens all the time. No, no, yes. it happens all the time. Yes. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. How are you, uh, Mr. Professor Tariq? I'm good. How are I'm you good. today? Bike, 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 bike. Terima kasih. Sama sama, sama sama. Okay. Nice to have you here. Actually, I have um you in many conferences. Ah, terima kasih. Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, sama -sama, I, I have sama -sama. seen in many conferences hours um, in some yeah. uh, conferences in Indonesia, uh, but today this is the first time I talk directly with you and lead you as a moderator. So it is very honor for me. <laughs> Thank it's you very much for as so much. for Indonesian education. Yeah, and also for all of the supported uh, university in this conference. Mm, without saying more uh, 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 more words, I would like to invite me, uh, Professor Tarik Elias, to uh, give us uh, his presentation uh, about about uh, exploring the challenges and solution of web based um, on the learners experience during COVID-19 pandemic. So the floor and the screen is for you, uh, uh, Professor Tarik Elias. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, first, uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, <clears throat> good afternoon uh, in Indonesia and good morning. It's already right morning. now. <laughs> now, actually, it's 9.30 in the morning. So I I, um, I woke up quite early, oh, but it's okay. still okay. I'm ready for Jama prayer, inshallah, very soon. Uh, but uh -huh. uh, first and foremost, I would really like to thank you mm -hmm. and extend my thanks to the current invitation to be part of the Indonesia conference. Um, um, I have a very good connection with Indonesia, and I would love one day actually to visit to visit Indonesia. When I saw the introduction um, um, and the national anthems uh, at the first of the conference, actually, um, I kind I felt nostalgic a little bit because I really miss Indonesia a lot. I miss the people, I miss the land, I miss, I miss the food. So hopefully one day I'll visit again. I've been to Indonesia five times. Maybe that's why I know a little bit of works in, in Bahasa, Indonesia. So uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, doctors uh, at all universities in Indonesia. Thank you for your invitation. I'm very honored. I'm, I'm very extremely honored to be part of this conference all the time. Uh, so yeah, uh, without further ado, I'm going to start my, my presentation right now. So the title of my presentation is Exploring the Challenges and Solutions of Web-Based Education on the Learners' Experiences During the COVID-19 Pandemic, which is um, a cognitive psychological approach which I'm going to use in, in my presentation. So the outline which I will talk about is uh, about four items. So the first one, it would be the shift of virtual classroom and education institute in, in the time of COVID-19. Then I'll move to the challenges solution of work-based learning space. After that, I will have a little bit on the, how the cognitive psychology can influence most modern teaching practices in web-based teaching. And then finally, uh, I will uh, tab a little bit on the rise of new pedagogy, which is a term actually I have coined together. So it's like it's like a new, it's like a Latin word for new and pedagogy in the time of twenty first pandemic uh, era, offering creativity and solutions to excellence and learning experiences. And actually, uh, I would I would before I start, I would like to say how wonderful the conference is. Uh, despite the the internet uh, uh, hiccup a little bit, I, I, I always admire. Uh, how professional everyone is, and uh, it it feels like I'm actually uh, physically there in the conference. So job well done for the conference uh, uh, organizers. Job well done for moderators. Job well done for for even the designers of the conference. So well done, everyone. Thank you so much. So. Um, I will talk about the shift of the remote pedagogy. So the current phenomena of remote online education has left in, in the instructors feeling out of space. They're not feeling really comfortable. Um, and as the setting for both physical presence and disciplinary gaze, was the, when I talk about the gaze, is like how the gaze from the students or how the gaze from the instructor to the student in the classroom um, is shifted or better canceled for most cases in online course classrooms. Maybe someone argued because in Saudi Arabia, uh, most likely when we teach, uh, it's not required to open the camp for us. So we lose the gaze, we lose that the interaction with the students because it's, we are instructed not to force the student to open the camp for cultural uh, implementations or because of the uh, inv invasion of the privacy of their homes. So th for that reason, a lot of my our students do not actually open the camp. So also I'll we'll talk about the balance of power which has been shifted in behavior of the students. So this is because they are not actually uh, opening the camp. They feel like they are not under the gaze uh, for, by the instructor. So therefore they feel more empowered at the same time. 
And then uh, in, in our research that I have been doing uh, lately in, um, during the COVID-19, and even before that, we claim that the hierarchy structure of the birth of space has developed into confusion on power struggle in the teacher-student relationship in the virtual space. So the student remote uh, learning, uh, the current generation of the student is highly emerged in multimedia. That they think it's part of their natural landscape. So in a, in a sense, they feel this is their home. This is their playground. This is what they could do. And this is what they could play with as well because of how they have been immersed in the multimedia uh, space. However, one can argue that the days as students are too modern to learn in a traditional setting and perhaps too aware to simply take teachers' words for granted. Uh, with the click of a mouse, students can today access a wide range of information and find answers to their questions on their own. So the question is, do we need, do they need us actually uh, as teachers? And how we can cope with this uh, phenomenon of the multimedia uh, fl a flood of information? So who are our students? We need to ask ourselves. Phonics have led to the emergence of several terms that attempt to describe and better understand the mindsets of, the, of this generation, including the terms such as net generation, digital natives, techno-savvy generation, and I, I, I call them Google buddies because they're really good friends with Google. And that's what I call the Google buddies. <laughs> so it has become apparent that using technology in class can improve students' levels of motivation, which in that sense is an indicator of the student engagement. So what do teachers, us, uh, feel these days? How do we feel these days? Well, to Zoom or not to Zoom in COVID-19 era, and even right now after COVID-19, what are we gonna do? How this may affect classroom pedagogy? Are we in control of our teaching online and virtual space? Can we give and be creative using a PC screen in our remote pedagogy practices? Do our students think we are doing a good job still? So the shift in paradigm for the teachers, there is a shift in paradigm. It's something we need to know and something we need to be aware of, of as well. So in our research, we poised that traditional power and discipline that the teacher used to claim has been transferred in a reverse panoptic gaze. So basically the gaze from the teacher to the student becomes the student to the teacher. Um, so the part of the reverse panop uh, panoptic gaze on, uh, on part of the student who are in control of the virtual classroom and its time and its space. The invisibility of our static physicality in some case of the student uh, in current online learning compared to the visibility pose a serious challenge, not only to the teacher authority, but also to her, his style of teaching. So how some of us feel these days, we feel we're actually being monitored by the students. We feel we're being judged by the students. We feel like every, the teachers and even the stakeholders, the policymakers are looking at us and they're asking um, out themselves, are the teachers doing a good job? How are they handling the students in the virtual world? So on one hand, some might argue that the student can claim more understanding as a result of their spatial freedom due to online material access. On the other hand, this new virtual space in online learning needs to be teacher-friendly and that visual contact between teachers and students should be used freely as well. So the, there are challenges of the online classroom. What are these challenges? Some may ask. There is an apparent and implicit anxiety that, that the values of traditional teaching may somehow be eroded. So maybe uh, in the future we've, we've, we could face a blended learning or flip, flip, flip classroom where physical actually teaching is not going to be the practice anymore. So the current institution pedagogy was predicted on a sharp dig dichotomy between traditional teaching and distinctly different current shift to remote pedagogy. There is a conflict we can see. So what is this conflict that we see? Hence, this conflict between conventional classroom pedagogy and the new remote online classroom setting boils down to the basic opposition between traditional classroom with their older teacher-centered approaches and more current remote pedagogy 
which is more student-centered. We are, actually, we can notice that, and every one of you can notice that, we are moving to from more from a physical classroom where the teacher-centered, lecture-centered pedagogy is both encouraged and enabled by the physical configurations of the virtual uh, and its remote pedagogy. So there is a shift towards remote pedagogy. And maybe there is also a need, and there are in some cases, it's less, uh, it's less costly to have remote teaching. If uh, there are luckily a lot of students who live in uh, villages and rural area, and for them, remote pedagogy and remote teaching was actually the answer for them. They have saved a lot of money. Uh, they're staying with their, home, with their families, and they not actually have to pay for rent, especially at the university level when they have to move from a, a village to, to a city or to study at the university. So commonly used to finish of pedagogy referred to both the art and the science of teaching. However, the unique capabilities of the web can be used in a combination with the good pedagogy to create active and creative online learning experience for the students. In recent years, the academic world has been an enthusiastic rush to the faculty of the World Wide Web as the newest mode of interface with the students, and everyone actually is aware of that. Behavior learning theory and cognitive psychology. What can we learn by using this framework? Behavior learning theory and cognitive psychology have influenced most modern teaching practices. Behavior learning theory developed largely from Skinner's view that learning is measured as a, as a change in individual behavior. So the behavior of the students is measured and therefore this is what we call it behavior learning theory. Behavior learning theory focuses on modifying the learner's behavior and produces instruction that involves presentation of this information. So what we do in that kind of framework, we understand how the students are behaved. And based on that, we try to give them materials that could help them learn faster and better. So cognitive theory or framework versus behavior psychology. Cognitive psychology focuses on the learner's mental state rather than behavior. BJ posted that individuals have in, 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 internal cognitive structures or ways in which to understand the world. So basically, their understanding of the world uh, because of the gap of generation is actually different. The way they think is not the same as we think as teachers. Teaching methods should therefore provide activities that challenge and engage students in order to cause assimilations and accommodation to take place. So in, in a sense, we can say that learning occurs when the learners actively relate new materials to their existing cognitive structure in the brain and recognize their understanding of the concept. Such active engagement with the material will lead to transfer of the concept to new situations, where, whereas remote memorization will not. And this is the thing about our student. Uh, we noticed in actually our research that um, pr um, doing by practice is better than like reading for, for memory as well. So this is actually a, a project that I've done with my students remotely. So student, I, I called this project Insta Poet, which is part of Instagram. So I was teach, teaching poetry. So I asked my student to, to actually write poetry based on uh, their feelings and the images they reflect um, the, uh, they reflect their feelings. And actually, I was really surprised how creative they were and how actually accurate. Um, at the first at the first times, like we look at the pictures, we don't understand the meaning behind those pictures. But once we I discuss actually with my student uh, the how the border is reflected, actually it was well connected to the feelings they have. And the last one actually, it was very funny because it was a Japanese restaurant and then like a sushi one. And I would ask my student why he took he took that picture, and he said because of my fiance uh to like his wife to be. Uh, she likes sushi, and it was a, it was a love point for her. So it was really interesting to see all this, like how creative they did with the materials they have on hand to transfer the learning process. So um, I call this actually new pedagogy. I call it the the right of new pedagogy. So several researchers have discussed pedagogical aspect of web page of higher education. Magnus of the University of Texas at Austin distinguishes between instructional system design model, 
versus hypermediate design model. So how is that? It's, it's like different in the classroom. So ISTD, all right, which is like the infrastructure system design model, is a traditional model for planning instructions. In which instruction designer identifies the goal, analyzes the goal as the skills and behaviors required, set performance objective, of course, and create test items, develops instructions, and evaluates their learning based on the user performance of the objectives. However, the hybrid design media is a little bit different. So in contracts, the HDM focuses on the, what the learner wants to learn and how the learner chooses to access information. This is a cognitive model based on the, what they want to do in their brains. So HDM is using a unique capacity of hybrid tech system to produce a learning environment distinctly different from the face-to-face -face instructions and is especially well suited to the pursuit of intermediate and expert knowledge in the complex and ill-structured learning domains. So there is a, we can say there is creativity in remote pedagogy if we let it do, if we use HDM model. So Backstone, which is like a software that uh, I have actually used with my students, was selected to foster the development of the student cognitive level of, of creating. The student immediately jumped right into designing their characters and coming up with scenes. Uh, they were able to invent and imagine scenes, compose dialogues, create their own characters, and use the vocabulary they had learned in different contexts. The applications provide a good deal of graphic uh, features, such as props, background scenes, and characters, allowing students the opportunity to freely express their creativity. So this is actually an example of the student and how they have made the dialogue. Um, in, in a sense, they, they feel like they are creating a new uh, story written by them, and they were very engaged in that. Um, the, the result, actually, of, uh, of the, using Bexton, uh, uh, we have actually realized how our students, if they have given the right materials, they can learn on their own and it may be sometimes better. So what we do as, as instructors could be facilitators more than anything else in that sense. So learn motivation in your more pedagogy, how we can be uh, motivate the students. Although it's tempting to believe that simply providing the latest technology and multimedia will supposedly motivate the uh, learners to, to flock to online learning sites, it's not necessarily the case. So how do we do that? Well, the whole rise that the level multimedia use in web-based training should be determined by the program design needs, not just by the desire to use the latest technology. For example, graphics, including pictures and charts, are valuable in clarifying information and maintaining student attention and interest. So what we found in our research, we, uh, when students are able to see the practical application of the knowledge, they are more motivated and they can more easily merge to the new information with their previous, previous experiences. So, in a sense, we can also say that simulations can also provide valuable experiences in applying new knowledge, either to contribute to the learning process or as an assessment of the learner's understanding of the objective and learning goals of the course. So successful learning or even more complex knowledge requires the student to engage in production of new knowledge. So evaluation as well, we can say that actually in the Bixons and also in the InstaPoets, and also they have the reflections and application of that knowledge um, in their multimedia uh, classrooms. In Magnus hypermedia design model, the design of instruction provides questions and guidance to foster evaluation and reflection by the learner. So what are the take home messages that we can learn from this uh, presentation and this topic? We can say that, that active learning should engage students in the learning process to create their own understanding of the subject matter. We all can also say learners ideally can choose their own, perhaps guided paths through no information based on their own ability and objectives. Then apply the information to new situations especially to their own situations, not the teachers. So the hybrid text environment we, was created to allow users to select their own paths through information. And the best example of web-based instruction facilitate this as part of an active learning process. 
This is the last slide, I promise you. <laughs> so, learners need to clearly present information to help them develop their own understanding of material. And this is a key statement which I like to repeat again. So, learners need clearly presented information. So, they are presenting information, and then that helps them develop their own understanding of the material. Large amount of text on the screen are difficult to read, especially nowadays. This isn't really fun, it's really difficult to read without pictures, without emojis, without colors, without charts. They need, they are visually more enhanced uh, with the colors or with, with the images than anything else right nowadays. So text should be broken up and arranged for maximum clarity. Graphic can be used selectively to clarify points further, maintaining the student's interest as well. So newer technology uh, pyramid movement of screen object to clarify ideas and also allow students to manipulate objects to show their understanding of the concept. Questions that promote evaluation, reflection, and creativity by students can be posed with forms for student writing and resulting essay can be reformatted by the computer and printed out for use by the student and faculty. And thank you so much. And as these are the references, I'll be happy to share with that with you. All right, so this is it. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer uh, questions if there's Q&A, if there's time. I'm sorry it was really quite long, but it's a lot of really good ideas I wanted to connect. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tariq. Um, well, it is a wonderful presentation. I believe actually we done, um, it, it is not uh, enough if only half an hour we have you in, in presenting this <laughs> because it is very <laughs> interesting. Uh, related to the way and the strategy, the pedagogy that you uh, offer to uh, in this presentation that if we can uh, use this, it's very useful for us as, as a, a lecturer who teach in, um, let's say, education faculty. So yes. this is very yeah. fruitful uh, uh, presentation, actually. Uh, and of course, we still have time for Q&A uh, for you, yeah. Professor Tariq. <laughs> so I'm, inviting, I'm inviting uh, some participants who want to ask. Maybe you yes, want to, uh, yes? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I invite uh, the participants. Uh, let me check first in the, in the chat, chat box. Yeah, or anyone so who wants to ask, so you can raise your hand. I will invite you to talk directly. You, you uh, want to ask anything? Um, one thing, uh, Professor Tariq, I am really attracted to the uh, the post. Yeah, this one, the post of your uh, students about the project. Yeah, in Starputs. So um, actually, uh, after seeing this, I am really eager to be in your class. <laughs> To be one of Actually, your the, the student really loved it. Uh, it was very creative, and uh, uh, I was actually amazed. I was touched uh, because uh, one of them actually, the, the first one, is is very tragic because he talked about his loss of his father. So he lost his father, and he was very sad. So he wrote a poem uh, about about his grief uh, about his loss of his dad, and that's why it looked like he was sad and, and not showing his face. So it, it was very reflective. Of their emotions but they have used that uh, in the learning materials uh, with the image uh, with English at the same time and not only that um, uh, we have posted these uh, images in Twitter and we see which one is the most with, with the likes so we get extra points so everyone was motivated to, to share their work on online and to see whether people are, uh, are commenting in their images so it was a very interactive actually uh, project. Yes and I believe that this is one of a good way um, uh, and, uh, and the appropriate way to express uh, students' feeling, what they yeah. want, what, what to learn, how to express it, yeah, everything. Yeah. That, so you combine it very well, uh, Mr. So, Professor Tariq. So I'm very okay. thankful for you. Okay. Uh, okay. We have some questions here from Mr. Yes. Oh. David Perodin. Can you please enlighten us more about the students are given the power? What is the common outcome in your learning culture? Yeah, enlighten, uh, enlighten in my about culture, the students. Or, <laughs> well, in my culture, it's 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 a very teacher centered uh, culture. So okay. uh, I, think I wrote an article uh, maybe in two thousand eleven and two thousand ten, and uh, in Arabic we say uh, also in, in Hadith we say man harfan abdan. 
which means that uh, for every letter I learn from a teacher, I will I will obey him for the rest of my life. So basically, the teacher is in in a position of power because of culture. So it's his way or the or the highway basically. So the students are they come with uh, um, not having a uh, power whatsoever. So the power completely is in control of the teachers. So that is in my culture. But what I did in my classroom, um, uh, I kind of transferred that power. So I I wanted them to to feel free to express their feelings, to feel free to be who they are, and without any shame uh, of expressing their feelings. In that kind of sense, I give them freedom of feelings, of, of emotions, which is a cognitive model that I use in my teaching, so that uh, they feel, in a way, they are empowered, but actually they are not empowered. <laughs> Well, it's actually you. You give them motivation, yeah. That is the way of you yeah. that you you give them that you that you motivate them. Yes, thank you very much. This yeah. is very well, nice. I linked. I linked actually. What I what I linked a good rapport with them. So mm -hmm. I I I I told them I'm more of a an older brother or, or a father to them, and mm -hmm. my job is actually to, to support them. So mm -hmm. I I need to uh to feel that there is a link between me as a teacher and as a student. So I treat him um, as well as my sons or my, my brothers. In yep. Islam, we say, in Islam, we say. So basically what yeah. we translate to, uh, uh, Islam is, is behavior, is how you behave. Yeah, I and, can't uh, agree and, more. <laughs> yeah, Correct. So, and this is what I, did, what I did in my class. So thank you. Is there are more yeah. questions? Because I think that there are shots. Wait, let me, let me check. Uh... Of why uh, some some uh, some uh, participant as your LinkedIn uh, account you have? Yeah, yeah. It's, if you can Google me, if you could Google my name, you find uh -huh. everything you need there. Uh, my name, my my Google Scholar, my org ID, my research gate, yeah. my Twitter, everything. I'm I'm open. <laughs> like you yeah. find me. Okay. okay, so anyone can contact you, can uh, communicate with you freely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Tariq. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I want to say, I want to tell you that <laughs> first, first time I see your because this is the, the the first time that I told you I I saw you directly from the picture, uh, the the brochure that is you look different because with the with that glasses <laughs> and the sword <laughs> and you, I have to tell you that. You are more handsome without the glasses. Oh. <laughs> and the and the young, young. <laughs> you look very young. It, it's very different with the poster, I think. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Okay, okay, I tell you, I tell you what. Actually, I, can I be honest? Can I be honest? I want to be honest with you. I know to be honest mm -hmm. with you. I, I want to look older. That's why I put the glasses on. Oh, oh. That's right. <laughs> But I like you like this without the glasses. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Terima Terima kasih kasih. Banyak, bro. Thank yes, you very much, hire. Prof. Tariq, uh, for the enlightened, uh, enlightening uh, uh, presentation. This is very fruitful, and I believe that every everyone in this in this room, in this uh, every participant, will get uh, advantage from yeah. your presentation. One too. last thing. One last thing. I really, really thank you so much for your invitation. I love Indonesia. I love you, people. I love my sisters and brothers. I love Dr. Muthaina, Dr. Muthaina, yeah. thank you so much uh, for it. Yeah. For you and wait for another well. invitation. <laughs> we'll no, we'll surely invite you again and again. I, I have to say confession. I, um, I want to say something. I will, One day I, could, I will live in Indonesia. When I retire, I I'm mean, I mean, I mean. In Indonesia. I mean, I mean. <laughs> 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 Professor, uh, uh, there, there is a participant asking if, if they can have, uh, they can access the PowerPoint. Yes, uh, I can, your I can send, yes, of course. You can send me an email and I, I, I'd be happy to share that, of course. Everything yes. is for free. Okay. Yeah, just find uh, Mr. Tariq from uh, Google uh, because uh, we are Google buddies, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Google buddies, that's what I call yeah. it. Google buddies. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, again, th thank you again from uh, for uh, Professor Tari. Uh, this is the, the end of the, your session. Uh, I will invite another um, uh, speaker uh, after this. But uh, since I have, yeah, thank you, thank you, Professor. Since I have a uh, bye bye. <laughs> um, since I have the uh, information that Papa Basri. <laughs>
I, I call him Papa. <laughs> Papa Prof. Basri. Yeah. Uh, it's not uh, here. He called me. He called me just hmm. now. But, uh, uh, he has. A, he he a has meeting. Uh, some uh, yes. meeting. Yeah, yes. yeah, meeting with the in, and in the. And it's very important. Yesterday. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we uh, will skip it first, and we continue to another speaker. Is it okay, uh, Mr. Andi Arifan? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Please. And uh, for the next uh, keynote speaker, I will invite um, Dr. Nur Aini. Are you ready? Sister, my beautiful sister. Aini. Aini. Are you Hello? Here? Yeah. Ah, today. Yeah. Okay. Because, because Papa Basri is not here, so <laughs> I will hand over. <laughs> And over this uh, room for you to uh, lead another uh, keynote speakers. So thank you very much for your time and for for the time to, the the chance given given to me. Thank you uh, S uh, Indonesian Shared Care Volunteer. Thank you Dr. Murmaina. Thank you Dr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Andi Asrifan. I love you all. <laughs> See you bye bye. So bye bye. Please welcome uh, Dr. Nur Aini. From State University of Makassar. Hey, One room, I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Kakak Dr. Lulu from Yen Laksmawe. Love you. Nice to meet you today. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> okay. Um. So now it's my turn to lead the keynote speaker session, and if um. Can say that is that from Professor Dr. Ahsan Adalila, PhD. Hello, I'm here. Am I audible? Yep. Yeah. Prof. Okay. Um. Welcome, Prof. Uh. Welcome to our international conference. Um. ICEPWS. Um. Such honor to to lead this uh, keynote speaker. Thank you, Prof, for joining this great international conference. So, hi, um, I'm Dr. Moraini. I'm from State University of Makassar, Indonesia. Uh, good afternoon from Indonesia, Prof. How are you doing, Prof, uh, Professor Dr. Afton? Thank you very much. Doing well. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Warm greetings. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Warm greetings. From from Republic of Crimea. It's great honor to participate you with you today and to share this common ground and uh, to identify uh, that Indonesia is a country of the countries, the great state, and I'm also looking forward to visit it one day. And it's a great chance. And uh, so the cognitive observance gives us uh, some remindings that we are also inside of a whole community, not physically, but uh, just mentally. And this virtual experience will help us to meet once again and hope in real life too. And thank you. And I'm uh, currently representing you academic dimension, uh, uh, the university number one in the Republic um, of Crimea. Yes. Uh Yes. Okay, Should I continue? Okay. Um, okay. Um, he's from Department of Advertising, Public Relations, and um, Publishing Institute of Media Communication, Media Technology, um, and Design VI, Tarnetsky, Crimean Federal University, Russia. Thank you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, um, welcome to the great international conference. This is, um, can you get something with the sound? Yes, unstable connection, I think, maybe okay. professor. Hmm. For no this problem. great conference, yep. Okay, um, today you are going to have a um, presentation and I hope you can um, share the insightful ideas and all the participants in around the world. I can say that is around the world because we have uh, around 11 countries join this international conference. So 
thank you very much for the uh, great support for the committees and the other. Okay, Professor, so without any further ado, uh, you may start your presentation and the screen is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, dear moderators, dear president of Paulo Paulo organization and uh, uh, professor scholars, warm greetings again. And okay, can I share my, my screen here? Okay, so just pointing out. Okay, uh, so I'm how, how, so happy once again to share the common ground today. And I'm representing you academic dimension, uh, Vernadsky Kremlin Federal University, uh, Institute of Media Communications, Media Technologies and Design. This is also a new academic uh, department in our university and my university is number one in the region. And I was welcomed uh, by uh, the rector to teach this year uh, the a special academic course called uh, like an interdisciplinary studies and taught for the students of must at the master's level. Uh, the course name is uh, the communication technologies. And uh, we also teach uh, two, uh, one, uh, two uh, semesters of this course, giving uh, additional skills, the digital skills to all our students in order to help them to maintain their uh, communication with the digital, uh, digital um, skills and digital room. So that's very important. And my topic will be related to uh, congruent communication and uh, uh, use of scamper technique in ESL multicultural classroom. So uh, very important. So uh, scamper is uh, also the acronym. Later on, I will explain to you uh, the appearance of it. And uh, uh, so I started to use it when I was working as head of English department in Crimean American College. And I want to start with a phrase that education doesn't change the world. Education changes the people who will change the world. So here is also some of my uh, highlighted research publications and projects. I'm doing there a lot. And thank you for Punjab Technical University uh, which has currently accepted me and as a PhD expert in um, uh, Department of uh, Management. So uh, what is congruent communication? That's very important. So, uh, you know, that's uh, the two years uh, we were inside of a pandemic era and uh, uh, we uh, currently teach in our university. Uh, um, just partially online, partially offline. But congruent communication happens when silent message are equal, uh, is equal to words. So uh, physiology uh, gives 55%, voice 38% uh, and words 7% here. So um, how can I assure that uh, my students can hear me? So. Uh, leads to students congruent communication leads to students understanding better and learning more then uh, leads to commu better communication leads to verbal flexibility flexibility and notice in perceptual style so visual all ears lights go on and auditory all ears bells ring and kinesthetic hands on and feels good So uh, congruent communication and uh, three main challenges that teachers face in today's classroom. The number one, balance of the different learning needs of students. Every student who walks through my door is different. Two, respecting expectations from all uh, uh, school admins. Not only do teachers have to ensure that each student in class is learning and engaged. We also have to make sure that we are in the align with the goals of the institution. And the third one is very important, particularly when you teach languages, helping parents and students meet long-term goals. Many of uh, my students don't understand the value of education because they have never seen the benefits of education can offer them. 
So Dr. Albert Meharibian in his book, Silent Messages describes, uh, okay, how we receive messages from other people. He believes that uh, we do this in three main ways and the words spoken by them are at the bottom of the, his list. The, the quality of the voice and the intonation and speed of delivery tell us more about the meaning of the message than the words themselves do. And more important than his are the nonverbal and nonvocal aspects of communication, which we receive from the person's physiology, body, gesture, uh, posture and gestures, and even uh, their uh, breathing patterns. Better than the Japanese proverb says, better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. So here are uh, the types of uh, perceptual styles. The uh, v standing for visual information comes from what we see. We gain auditory input from what we hear and kinesthetic K input from what we feel, touch, taste, and smell. And in addition, there is actually a secondary form of auditory input, like an auditory internal dialogue, AID, which involves the processes to talking to oneself and of doing calculations and figure work in our heads. Even through the uh, we what each, uh, even though we each uh, have a physiology, and um, uh, for all these forms of sensory input. Most of us have a preferred or primary physiology for which we perceive of our own ver version of the world. And in this, uh, this is true with us. It is certainly also true uh, of our students. This input form a perceptual style will tend to predominate whenever we recall incidents, solve problems or communicate with others. If we communicate, we are communicating and teaching others uh, with the same perceptual style as ourselves, it is usually easy to achieve clear communication. But what happens when we work with someone who has different style? Uh, to address this question, we need to first identify our own primary perceptual style. Can you find yourself in the following descriptions as an example? So people uh, with a visual perceptual style tend to find that they learn more, most quickly by watching a demonstration, reading some instructions or seeing a chart, diagram or drawing a task before tackling. Visual people are very aware of the aesthetic shapes, colors and movements in the world around them. They like to have a tidy uh, color uh, coordinated environments with the things of beauty, especially paintings adorning their offices and homes. The color coordinated theme is often carried through the, into their smart clothes. Artwork is hung uh, high on their walls and in this brings the paintings into the visual portion of their line of sight. You might notice that visual people tend to look up when recalling information because they are literally seeing a picture of it in their mind's eye before you tell you about it. When a visual person gets a new idea, they will often describe it uh, having a flash or a vision, getting a bright idea uh, or uh, inside the lights of uh, going on. Uh, they will preview information, uh, watch uh, for a clear picture, draw some guidelines, and uh, then frame a written proposal. If you look, you will see that the visual perceptions lang uh, per person's language is uh, uh, full of pictorial wor words and images. Okay. Here is also a good example uh, showing uh, showing uh, the chart, the visual communication planner. So uh, you can uh, visualize your communication strategy by doing this chart and you can stick it and uh, even make a kind of diagram and using your own office uh, uh, just. And uh, education here is not the learning of effects but the training of the mind to think. So as uh, once Albert Einstein uttered. Uh, uttered. And uh, here are also examples of visual communication. It is also from the left, uh, the alphabet of Korean language 
just doubling, uh, uh, just Korean characters, Hangul with the um, uh, Cyrillic, uh, uh, with, with the Latin uh, letters here. So one can quickly understand and uh, just uh, identify the characters when you learn new language. And also here is also a chart of classroom language words and vocabulary for students to ask properly. And this one I was using when I was teaching in Turkey and the uh, Arabic letters, uh, Alif, Dead and B, uh, just describing the word Adab, which means literature in Turkish. And the F, Alif with standing is also, uh, these three letters are symbolizing uh, the philosophical meaning uh, and bring uh, L, uh, the first letter is standing for the word L, which means hand, dead, uh, dead standing for the word dil, means language, and the Beth uh, letter is standing for the back. So uh, uh, the meaning of these three characters in Turkish, when you uh, just grasp the education, you study something, you should be the master of your uh, hand, master of your tongue, and master of your frame, of your back. So, uh, okay. So learning another language is not only learning different words for the same things, but learning another way to think about things. So this is Flora Lewis. And here is also a good example of uh, cognitive structure and cognitive behavior and cognitive psychology. Uh, when uh, you are, for example, explaining uh, the topic, uh, people and personalities, peels of character, you give your students as handouts or just uh, showing the, the gestures and emotions and just uh, trying to identify, for example, uh, illustrate your mood in free uh, by the free examples from this list and students try to illustrate. So sometimes it's easy to identify the emotions and the first and the second one, they also learn new words and new interactions, how to use them inside of the context. And also idioms, uh, the set phrases, they're quite important. And we know that my doctoral thesis was uh, also uh, delivered to the contrastive uh, analysis of uh, idioms in different languages. And uh, you know that uh, idioms are the result of cognitive uh, be, behavior and cognitive experience of the nation. And uh, sometimes we also need to identify why we're talking so. And uh, we're also using a lot of uh, dictionaries, Webster's and so on in order to identify the meaning of it. For example, apples and origins, the banana skin to go nuts, a couch potato, they're quite popular. So this is also example of visual communication, posters, other ways to say, and you can use them in your daily activity. Uh, and, excuse me. And your uh, daily activity, you can give them as a handout, but most important when you print them out and stick, it, uh, stick them onto your wall, this will help them uh, particularly uh, psychologically to concentrate or choose the better color or the color that they like or the color that uh, uh, just identify their mood. So here is also another one uh, example of visual communication, uh, Japanese illustrating Japanese structure of the management. Seiri, Seiton, Seitsu, uh, Seiketsu, Shitsuke, so five S of Japanese management. And another one uh, is quite uh, useful when you are trying to explain uh, the, uh, the hard topics to understand in understanding or the kind of complex one. So one of the example is um, just uh, the declension of uh, times uh, or a conjugation of, verb, uh, uh, of verbs in German language, presence, Präteritum, perfect, and Futurum eins. So this is quite also helpful uh, when you are trying to get some uh, complex information, but uh, with help of baby steps. Another one is also quite helpful uh, with, when you have uh, to explain, when you need to explain uh, the modal verbs and to identify the shades of modality. This is kind of visual 
perceptual and you can quickly skim them and put them into your uh, frame of mind. And from the left also, uh, the list of uh, these model verbs uh, and describing uh, just uh, uh, emotions, feelings and model activity. And in Chinese, uh, English and Russian languages. And that's why quite helpful. This can uh, simply combine and uh, in multicultural classroom, people can uh, simply accept uh, and understand deeply uh, by the, uh, identifying uh, the words in their native language. Or uh, here's also another example of shades of modality, quite useful. And uh, 75 very important prepositions. Here's also very important one and students and scholars and even teachers, they use this frame and they like it. Um, and just very important one to blame, four to 10, two. And so this is also kind of good example of visual communication and, and also uh, irregular plurals they are quite important, for example, the word cactus in uh, singular and plural for cactus is kept tied and uh, ox oxen and so on. Okay, or this is also a good example of visual communication parts of cat uh, or parts of the dog. Uh, especially works when you're teaching uh, a class of English for uh, specific purposes. And um, let me explain, for example, uh, when you teach for veterinary medicine, um, that's quite helpful. So, and also if conditionals. So this table is very important. And uh, so this is quite helpful. Uh, particularly in learning also different languages, uh, when you have a good schedule frame, you can take, uh, for example, uh, the same uh, and you can compare with uh, conditionals uh, from different languages or different languages, that's quite helpful too. And also good frame of visual communication. Here's uh, quite good for psychologists, uh, the shades of uh, modality and the shades uh, of mood to express and uh, a great number. Even my students, they put this uh, uh, pie uh, as a wallpaper uh, for their smartphones and uh, um, uh, let's say iPads. Also good example of hats when you quite deepen one to want to uh, illustrate. And once I had student uh, who was uh, the owner of the food, uh, of food store footwear store and a hat store. And he was so lucky to have these uh, charts. And even he put some of them uh, into the handouts for the commercial. Okay. So also good example for the motivation and uh, even it works. So um, sometimes it's funny for uh, just Apple, Google, Amazon and Harley and Davidson and Disney and metal uh, moral of the story by a garage. So what uh, this funny uh, pictures can combine and uh, just give the positive reflection emotion uh, to develop or to uh, brush up the uh, speaking skills of the person. And also ABCD family of three is quite helpful to illustrate for uh, when you teach the class of history of languages, uh, the history of uh, English, uh, this is quite helpful uh, just in order to um, put uh, the, uh, the information together and to identify um, the initial uh, or the mother language and the spread of the languages across the civilizations. And this is typological and uh, um, just a physiological classification of languages. Okay. The next one is auditory perceptual auditory perceptual style. If you give uh, people with the auditory perceptual style a set of written or diagrammatical instructions, they may find it very difficult to do the assignment. But if you tell them about the a project and talk them through the steps, they are able to follow the instructions more easily. Auditory people tend to adopt listening postures with their heads and eyes to the side hands to their ears as a uh, listening on the telephone. Their voices often have uh, mellow and middle tonality and they make good radio announcers. 
They often have a wide collection of music at home. When an auditory uh, person uh, gets a new idea, they would uh, say bells rang, cymbals uh, chimed, and uh, uh, it uh, had a pure tone to it. They will listen to the res resonance and rhythm of a new project, try to create harmony amongst the elements, and then orchestrate, orchestrate a response. If you tune into auditory people, you will hear yourself listening to a lot of uh, uh, lots of words and vowed sounds. Auditory internal dialogue perceptual style, AIT. The perceptual style is a form of auditory perception. In this case, uh, however, these people talk to themselves about what they are experiencing. It is normal for all of us to have some internal dialogue with a certain times. Sometimes it can sound like the voice of authority saying critical things about us. If we choose, we can change the tone to, of this self-talk to make it uh, less disturbing. Aid uh, uh, people, however, process most of the sensory perceptions through what they would say to themselves about what they are experiencing. When you, commu when you communicate with this group, it might be useful to use phrase, phrases like, what would you say to yourself? if uh, an event were to happen, or tell me what you, uh, story you might have about the, uh, that, uh, the experience. And the K, kinesthetic perceptual style. So kinesthetic perceptual people uh, find they can learn most easily by trying things out and getting their hands dirty. Looking and talking may not help them so much. We like to handle equipment and get a feel for how it might work. These people definitely read the instructions only as a, uh, a last uh, resort. So kinesthetic people are not usually too uh, concerned uh, with appearances, but often have very comfortable clothes and home furnishings with an emphasis of, on textures and soft to the touches fabrics. They tend to be very grounded in their bodies uh, they, with their feet placed firmly on the earth. Kinesthetic people will often look down to check their feeling state before deciding to take the action. So kinesthetic people will get a buzz, feel right and have a gut response to a new idea. They will want to come to grips with a problem, step through it and carve out new pathways as they, uh, they walk through their way to a solution, as you process uh, uh, their communication, you will fall over a large number of acting and feeling words. So did you find yourself in any of the above descriptions? Did one seem to mean more to you than others? And did you recognize some of your students? Does the similarity or dissimilarity between your style and what of those others explained of this is or uh, difficulty you might find you might have encountered in teaching or communicating with these people? Sure that you have some uh, okay, notes of this. So in this above descriptions, you may have recognized aspects of um, more uh, of more than uh, one style. Uh, in your learning, teaching, and communicating uh, repertoires. Use an analogy from the computer world where uh, we all have the necessary hardware for all forms of sensory perception. However, the software we choose to work with can uh, vary considerably. Some of us will be using several varieties of uh, software simultaneously for most purposes, and some of us will be used We'll use one set of software for one purpose and different set for another. There are no right or wrong styles in perception. All are valid and useful. Certainly the most flexible we can, come, uh, we can become in using our own perceptual ne neurology, the more likely we will be able to communicate with others with the different styles, for this is uh, where our communication difficulties often lie. It is easy to imagine that, for example, the frustration of kinesthetic person might feel when trying to learn from a visual teacher. Have you had such experience? I'm sure that you can some 
you had some notes of this and thoughts too. This is how do you, uh, you do it. Uh, so this is how we do it and work with your strengths uh, while you take more notice of those sensory inputs that you have tended uh, to ignore until now. Until now, this means catering to your own style of learning input and adding gradually to your repertoire. Uh, now, as you can, as you recognize more precisely what styles your students might be using, you can fine tune your teaching skills. Of course, in any group, you can safely assume that all the three perceptual styles will be presented or present. This means you need to ensure that all the sensory styles are covered and present information, uh, present information visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically. This takes practice. You can add sensory aspects to your teaching gradually as you become more accomplished and uh, comfortable with a variety of styles. Here are also two exercises to help you to develop your teaching repertoire. So you can uh, just take picture of them and practice uh, inside of uh, your own community. And uh, for example, one exercise one, uh, just uh, uh, identify verbal flexibility, add as many visual, auditory and kinesthetic words as you can uh, to the list below, list below. and an essential element of good communication and thus teaching is an extensive and uh, flexible vocabulary. So add more words to those provided below you can. So visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So picture, to short, shout, bright, uh, peer note, drawing, uh, okay? Listening, grip, uh, loud, smooth, exciting, warm, and whole. So did you find that one list uh, was harder to expand than the others? Most people do. And also a number of examples here where uh, you can, uh, just develop your the skills of your students of communication. Okay, another one is for presentation exercise too. List of the types of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic approaches you can imagine using for teaching a class. So visual could include colorful flip charts, visual uh, video slides, all the hat transpresses uh, and diagrams using with all the whiteboard and your own movements and gestures and auditory might include the versatile use of your uh, voice, having students discuss issues, gentle music, and so on. And um, kinesthetic may include activities that induce good feelings, like uh, telling jokes or highlighting the humorous aspects of all the topic. So uh, my ex personal experience, I use this all three ways of communication, and this brings the student a uh, good background. So finally, students uh, uh, I have uh, good feedback from my students and they are eager to come back to continue that we learn. And uh, uh, for example, when we learn the dialects of English or local variants, I just uh, take examples of speak speakers from uh, South Africa or African-American English or Indian English or Singaporean English English and students entertain and students find that the world is so broadened and the people should communicate, and uh, that's quite helpful. So another one is presentation. Yes, visual is very important. When uh, I do all my lectures and classes uh, with help of presentation, I need to demonstrate them. And in order, so uh, auditory and visual communication, and then comes kinesthetic, and number three is also uh, with the help of presentation, they can, fix the, uh, the information from free from uh, third uh, and second and first uh, side in order to have a general uh, pitch. So the VAK model is an excellent model for developing a presentation. It encourages you to focus on the sensory based processes as well as the content. Using a VAK approach will make your classes more dynamic and interesting and will enhance the understanding and retention rates of your students. When you began teaching, you probably tended to present material in a similar way to the one in which you had been taught. 
it will take time to begin to gradually incorporate more creative VAK elements into your teaching. This will work best if you add small things at a time. It's less stressful and also allows you to check the response of your students to see if what you change is really effective. This is more like an action research. So, uh, and the thing is to describe today is the scamper technique, the result of a VAK model. The scamper technique, quite useful, uh, particularly in American classes, so uh, the scamper uh, technique use a set of directed questions that you answer about uh, your problem in order to come with the new ideas. The stimulus comes from forcing yourself to answer questions that you would uh, not normally pose. The question directs you to thinking about problems in uh, ways that typically come up with the new ideas. SCAMPER is an acronym that stands for questions relating to the following. So SCAMPER, standing for substitute, to combine, to adopt, to modify, to distort, to put to the other purposes and eliminate and reverse. So substitute, think about substituting part of your problem for something else. By looking for something to substitute, you can often come up with new ideas. Typical questions. Uh, what can I, I substitute to make an improvement? What if I swap uh, this for that and see what happens? How can I substitute the place, time, materials, or people? Combine. Think about combining two or more parts of your problem to achieve something different or the enhanced synergy. Typical questions. What materials, features, processes, people, or components can I combine? Where can I build a synergy? Adapt. Think about which parts of the problem could be adapted to remove the problem or think how, could you, how you could change the nature of the problem. Typical questions. What part of could I change and uh, in, in exchange for what? What if I were to uh, change the characteristics of a component? Modify to, or distort. Think about changing part of all of the current situation or to distort it uh, in an unusual way. By forcing yourself to come up with new ways of working, you are often prompted into an alternative solution. Typical questions. What happens if I were an exaggerate or feature or a component? What will happen if I modify the process in some way? Put to other purposes. So think of how you might be able to put your current solution situation process to other purposes or think what uh, you could uh, reuse from somewhere else in order to solve your own problem. Typical questions. What else could I use this in? Or uh, who or what else might be able to use it? Eliminate. Uh, think of what might happen if you eliminated various parts of the situation, process, problem, or and consider what you might do in that situation. This often leads you to consider different ways of tackling the problem. Typical questions. What would, I, uh, would happen if I removed a component or a part of it, how else uh, would I achieve the solution without the normal way of doing it? And the last one, but not the least, uh, in the list, think of what reverse. So think of what you would do if a part of your problem worked in reverse or was done in a different order. What would you do if you had to do in the reverse? You can use this to see the problem from different angles and come up with new ideas. In essence, uh, you should ask yourself questions uh, relating to each of the scamper words to come up with a new idea. Spend some time developing questions that challenge your current way of thinking. It is acknowledged that not all the questions will fit in their every scenario, but you will need to extract uh, the meaning of each uh, question and develop your own, which in, is directly relevant to your situation. It is in the principle behind the question what you should apply to your own problem, not just the immediate question asked. 
So reach out and uh, touch uh, someone. This is example uh, of kind of exercise where you can use um, uh, the help of scamper technique here. So think for a minute about how we communicate. Most of the time we use words and although we write and read those words, much of our daily communication relies on speaking and hearing them. Tackling, uh, uh, that's just talk, uh, talking is fast, easily, uh, easy and far, and uh, with the technology almost unlimited by distance. About 20 years ago, there was a long running and very successful and campaign that encouraged people to use the telephone to reach out and touch someone by calling a long distance to talk with the friends and family. So what would happen, however, uh, if we actually did rely on touch to communicate? Communication would have an entirely different set of behaviors and requirements because the skin uh, detects a different kind of energy that does the ear. So using what you know about the sense of touch, try to invent, uh, uh, try to, uh, Excuse me, Prof. Yes. Um, you still have three minutes. I'm so okay, sorry. thank you. Just I'm yeah. trying to finish. Uh, I'm finishing. And uh, this is the last chart. Uh, the three important components of intercultural communication competence. I put here also uh, because it just uh, the scamper technique and the communication skills, they are inside of multilingual in the ESL classroom, multicultural one, cognitive, are related to thought and knowledge, effective, emotional, and attitude, and behavioral. So pyramid of uh, intercultural competence here, uh, as example. And uh, whatever definition we subscribe to, we have to recognize and understand that intercultural communication operates both at surface uh, uh, and uh, deep levels. More importantly, and uh, it is their deep level that help us to understand how people from different cultures communicate. We examine in greater depth that concepts of surface and deep levels of intercultural communication. The discussion aims to demonstrate that it is not only for the critical reflection of variables affecting intercultural communication at their level that we can begin to build our global community on firm pillars of respect and dignity for all. So, Okay, cultural identity serves as an inter interpretive device. Uh, it helps us to uh, see ourselves along such uh, dimensions as race, ethnicity, kinship, soil, region, gender, and religion. So here are also three important deep-rooted structures which shape our own worldview, religion, family, and history. And yeah, when you educate a girl, you educate a family and the whole community. So just, just doing, drawing to the conclusion. So uh, being uh, the competent communicator uh, in an inter intercultural encounter uh, means that you have the ability to analyze the situation and to select the appropriate mode of behavior of, of communication. And here we identify appropriateness and effectiveness as importance as important aspects of intercultural competence. You can see here them in the list. Okay. So, uh, and uh, just summing up my report, here is the last slide, uh, to be interculturally competent and to ensure the appropriate and effective management of any intercultural communication encounter, all the three components will have to be ad adequately uh, satisfied. So religion, and the nation one and the third one too. So many of the problems in intercultural communication arise out of inadequate and inaccurate information and ignorance about the diverse of cultures. So we continue to mingle with a similar group because it is natural to feel insecure and uncertain in unfamiliar situation and uh, substitute our limited knowledge for the truth. Further, we use uh, just uh, aspiring toward intercultural competency is uh, the first step uh, toward developing appropriate behavior to effectively, effectively manage an intercultural event. So thank you for the uh, 
uh, your kind attention, for your listening. Thank you for your ears and hope you have some questions. I'm ready to answer them. All right. Um, Spasiba, Professor. <laughs> that is I'm trying to use a Russian. Um, thank you very so much, Professor. You did great. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih banyak. Uh, all right. So I can say that is Spasiba. Is that great? Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for your um great and insightful presentation and um you're talking about concrete communication and the last point that I can say that you try to um mind and then ensure about being a competent communicator. Thank you very much, Professor. So I would like Thank you. to in Thank you so much, my dear um, Professor. One thing, one thing, Prof, uh, that I I always remember. Uh, one one word in in Russian, ura, <laughs> ura, ura. <laughs> yes. <laughs> love, really love it. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's uh, motivate us. That's uh, that's the one that can uh, give us a spirit. Uh, to, to, to to do uh, uh, something. Thank you, thank you, my dear professor. Uh, you. And uh, you are always yeah. welcome, and you pronounce them all these words and hura and spasiba correctly without yeah. accent. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. and thank you. we're we're thinking about uh, just creating summer uh, summer Russian language school mm. for journalism department, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we can uh, invite you. We have also medical university in our university, medical institution, our university. And uh, we have a lot of students coming from abroad to, uh, to uh, study medicine. So, wow. uh, and we have, we, have, we have students from Nigeria, Malaysia, and mm. hope yeah. to meet some. I thought I saw some from Indonesia, but we wow. were quite different too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, thank, thank you, you thank you for thank you. One thing I want to uh, I want to sum it, sum up uh, the communication is very important, uh, particularly in the digital era, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a lot of researchers were done uh, due to the communication in people's behavior, and uh, uh, the first thing what we do here we communicate with help of the internet we do great here. And I'm also very thankful uh, to the president of my university, Professor Dr. Andrei Falaleev, uh, and the head of my institution, Professor Dr. Uh, Lubov Savchenko, who helped uh, uh, help me and uh, just gave me opportunity to be present here today and represent uh, the university number one, uh, uh, the oldest university uh, in Crimea. So I will uh, welcome you to my region and hope you will find out a lot of similarities. Uh, we have also good uh, landscape area. So my area uh, geography is a very touristic one. And uh, we have Black Sea and we have Azov Sea. So uh, uh, just to have a, like an island situation, uh, we have two seas in the no south and in the north. So many thanks again. And once again, I need to learn this word, hold on. So, okay, so. Uh, hello, uh, terima kasih banyak. <laughs> Pasiba, uh, I can say uh, that. All right, okay. thank you. Wait, wait Amy, uh, for, for the next, uh, we want to uh, sign in uh, MOU with you, with your yeah. university, if possible. Uh, sure. uh, we will send to you the MOU um, uh, uh, format, and then you can read and see. We plan and to arrange, yes, yeah. yes, Prof. We plan to arrange uh, some uh, for for MOU, MOU uh, uh, among uh, some university from Indonesia and your university exactly. Hopefully, Thank you. Yes, uh, we would like to have it, and uh, I would like to, uh, to do this uh, and join uh, to do some joint projects. That's why we're in, and uh, please also attach the brochure in English to describe your branches and uh, number of uh, specialities. Just taught in yes. masters and uh, BA levels. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Thank you very much. All right. 
um, thank you, Professor. Uh, nice to see you, and I wish you to have a, a great day. And then we wish that we can meet. It. Um, all right. So I think uh, we would like to move on to the next um, keynote speaker. So I would like to uh, turn me back to my themes. Brother Abdul Wafi, is that true? Or back yeah. to yeah, yeah. Andy Asrifan. All right. Okay, so thank you very much for joining the session from uh, Dr. Ahdem Dalilab. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, uh, Bang Andi, is it okay we start to have yes. Dr. Ahmed? Please, Please okay. go on. Yes. Well, uh, thank you very much, everyone. And now we are moving on to uh, the next uh, our keynote speaker, invited speakers. Let me call Dr. Amitab uh, Fikram Dwifedi. Uh, hello, sir. Namaste. Uh, namaste. Hi. Uh, hi. Good afternoon to all of you from India. <laughs> Long time no see, anyway. So I think you look uh, younger. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this <laughs> okay. I, 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 I used to see your uh, picture with your daughter, your cute daughter, and your wife uh, on Facebook. And I think you have a great and happy family. And uh, I'm so happy looking at your, uh, I mean, your nice picture with your family in a way. And by the way, just uh, welcome to our uh, international conference on education, technology, and social sciences, uh, ISET uh, 2022. And uh, our theme, Human Capital and Facing New Paradigm of Industrial Revolution 4.0. And uh, Dr. Amitabh uh, Fikram Dwifedi here is uh, from India, Faculty of School of Languages and Literature and Chairperson Media Cell at Sri Mata Faisno Devi University, India. Uh, Dr. Amitabh, are you ready to have your session for- uh, Yes, yes. Here? Yes, oh. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So I wish your time to have, uh, I mean, to enjoy your, your session. Okay, fine. Yep. Uh, let me share the screen, then I will start. Okay. Uh, so I hope my screen is uh, visible to all. Yes, really visible, sir. Yeah. So uh, in this session, um, I think another is opening, yeah. So in this session, I'm going to talk on the topic titled Critical Readings of uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, we all know that the sustainable development goals, they talk about like how uh, developing nations uh, or uh, even developed nations, how they can eradicate uh, poverty, how they can uh, uplift the uh, uplift uh, their education environment, like how people can get decent jobs and uh, uh, like there will be a zero, zero hunger. And they aim that this uh, goal is to be achieved by 2030. So uh, what we are going to do in this session, we are actually uh, have a critical critical reading. So there are two things. We have developmental goals. And let's say a teacher is going uh, with, the, with these goals in a classroom, then how teacher can teach critical reading. So two things are there. We will get aware of sustainable development goals and uh, uh, the student will get to know specifically about sustainable development goals at the, at the same time. They will also get to know that how to initiate a text, particularly how can you initiate a critical reading. Uh, so these two things uh, are, are there. So uh, as you can uh, see that the term critical reading, uh, it has two meaning associated with that. First is like we need to have a close and careful reading. So what is the meaning? What is the implication of close and clear, careful reading? Uh, we need to take care of three things. First thing is uh, what the author is saying and what are the 
methods that are used by the author to communicate information and second thing is like we need to read a text objectively so we need to provide objective interpretation in reading because critical reading is related to academics so we all are in academics and we know how important it is to read a text for understanding so it is not the case like uh, we are reading a text only for information but how that information is passed into understanding that is the aim at the same time uh, when we take into consideration language skills then we generally talk about four language skills they are l s r and w now um, there is a crucial difference between uh, l s and r w so as we know that comins uh, in his bix and kelp model he talks about that academic language proficiency is different from basic interpersonal communication skills so under basic international uh, inter uh, interactional communication skills we have spoken and listening uh, part and when it comes to academic language proficiency or particularly uh, cognitive academic language proficiency then we have reading and writing so there is a saying and this is uh, my favorite quote that a good reader is also a good writer so if you want to improve our writing skills then one must learn how to read properly so let's say a teacher who has these sustainable development goals with him or her and the teacher goes to the class and uh, the first thing the teacher needs to do is to teacher uh, teacher needs to tell the student that first you have a gist of this like you need to you, you need to know what this uh, overall text about so this skimming part is there then uh, teacher can ask a couple of question related to let's say statistics or some figures that are mentioned so that will cover into the scanning part but at the same time in academics particularly and at advanced level generally we focus not on skimming and scanning but we what we focus on in depth reading so uh, the goal of a teacher is to make understand a, a particular text completely what the writer is saying and then to evaluate the text objectively so these are the things uh, the teacher will keep in mind and as i said like in this uh, sustainable development goals we are we have actually 17 goals so uh, how to remember these goals let's say uh, your task in one hour that a student will know about these goals uh, you have previously provided that this text to students at the same time they retain this in the memory it should not happen like after the class and the student they do not remember so for that uh, there is one method that is known as track method and uh, some basic question uh, teacher can raise uh, related to the text for example what is the type of source so let's say student will tell it is a primary source or a secondary source then what is the relevance of the source then the student will answer okay it's an abstract of 17 sdgs then who is the author of the text then undp then what is the aim of the source so the aim of this entire sdgs uh, goals like to hope for a, a better future then what is the nature of the context let's say empirical because data is there and what is the currency so it like highly and time sensitive because these goals are not applicable for one country so it is like for all countries like developing countries under developed country and developed countries so these goals are for all because these are problems that the world is like there uh, there is no poverty in america it is not the case like there is no hunger in europe so these are the problems Uh, that the entire world like crime, climate action let's say uh, the 13 so once the student is reading this then how he can retain this in the memory uh, that is the job because the job of the teacher is to transfer information into understanding because we know that information is available everywhere information like we have free ebooks let's say we have wikipedia we have google where we when we type something we get everything but information is not enough we must transfer information into understanding understanding and that is the task of the teacher so let's say first uh, after taking the gist of uh, these goals a student will answer these question uh, mentioned in the track method and they are the part of pre reading activity let's say then the teacher teacher will pose a question to students because uh, 
uh, and what type of question is to uh, teacher can raise teacher can raise question like uh, tell me one thing uh, that can make your life better so they will ask like uh, quality education can make my life better A student b will answer like good health will uh, make my life better some will someone will say like uh, uh, if i have more money then it will make my life better so and then the same question teacher will raise like what will make uh, your country better what will make the world better so this is again a pre reading activity so these are the things like if someone is asked answering quality education then we have one goal related to quality education if someone is saying no poverty then we have one goal that is associated with they will associate uh, themselves the student will associate themselves like the things that are mentioned in sustainable development goals they are not something alien things they are very much related to as a person as an individual they are very much related to your country and they are very much related to world the bottom line is whatever you are teaching to students try About. to try to make them associate with with the text uh, at individual level at the, the level of society at the level of their country or at the level of the world so the the aim is like to make global uh, local global so whatever you are studying locally try to associate with uh, with it uh, with, with that particular text globally that is the aim so once there is a connection this connection is established then this is the starting point of uh, a reading activity that is the starting point of understanding that teacher can also do i think someone's mic is on please uh, switch off your mic this is just coming uh, then uh, uh, again a pre reading activity uh, and these are some goals and teacher can ask that how you can uh, how you can uh, associate one goal with the another so these are like sustainable development goals so this thing will write we will write in the center and then uh, we will do some type of sketching activity like no poverty is related to no hunger no hunger is related to good health and well being well being is related to clean water and sanitization now this is not an absolute thing this is a relative thing so different students they will work on this different student they will uh, make their association with that teacher will just uh, uh, supervise them that how one thing is related to another thing and what is the benefit of this activity the benefit of this activity is actually to make connection associative learning how you can associate things with other so here like as uh, as lev vygotsky said like teacher is like like a coach teacher is like more knowledgeable other and more knowledgeable other works like uh, like uh, uh, for for a time being only so if teacher uh, succeeds in imparting that how to read a text properly then they can read any other text irrespective of the fact whether the text is a novel irrespective of the fact whether the text is a poem or any any other text so this activity is actually teaching them that how independently you can read a text for meaningfulness for understanding now let's say uh, this is again the pre reading activity and now engage reading activity how you can have an engage reading activity so let's say this is an abstract of sdg sustainable development goal 1 and what it says end extreme poverty in all forms by 2030 so teacher can teach like look at the first sentence look at the last sentence do you find any connection between first and second uh, last sentence so it's like the first sentence is basically the topic sentence and if you look at the concluding sentence then you will find that concluding sentence is some sort of paraphrase of the topic sentence with little uh, information to add and what about the other sentences between topic sentence and concluding sentence then the student will say like they are supporting the idea so this way a uh, student will learn that how a good paragraph is to be constructed so, and this is a good paragraph of because supporting uh, sentences they are connected to topic sentences so this thing a teacher can also uh, teach at the same time again the note taking activity most of the time uh, we face this problem that whatever teacher is saying student is writing everything word by word now this is not the way uh, academics works because you need to take notes you are reading 100 books you are reading 50 books you can't just write everything that is there in the book you need to take a gist you need to make notes so similarly teacher can tell that how you can make notes so like you have a comparison between sd uh, sdg2 and sdg1 so here you can use the mark of asterisk for example like
like uh, the sdg one starts yes it is a sdg2 similar type of phrase is there but in different word it is a tall order so again like this comparison they can make like uh, same type of phrases uh, that is there then at the same time like uh, i have written uh, on the right hand side p3 and p3 is relevant to something that is uh, there uh, let's say uh, like on uh, other page so like they are cross referencing each other so like p3 on page 3 what we have is in page 2 like they are the information is similar like uh, at one place we are talking about like 800 million people around the world still live on less than 1.5 dollar a day and on another page what we are saying for the sake of uh, like but for the sake of nearly one out of every nine people on earth who go to bed hungry every night we have got to try so again this type of uh, uh, this type of thing they can also uh, make like some information is on page number 11 and the same type of information or extension of same type of information is on page number 66 so this cross referencing is also important at the same time teacher can also tell like how to use margin so there is a margin on the top bottom left and right in a text so that they, they must use those margin then there are certain things like what are the things that you need to underline and what are the things that you need to highlight so these are the things that teacher uh, can also teach while reading uh, reading them then another is like uh, how to uh, how to make your reading argumentative now argumentative is like there is a tolman method of uh, of uh, argumentation so where we need to find out whether a paragraph is uh, is perfectly constructed or not for example like uh, here they we have a claim and what is the claim like and extreme poverty in all forms by 2030 and this claim is without any qualifier now uh, and when when we look at the first sentence then we will find like the first sentence is working like a rebuttal because what it says uh, it is an ambitious goal at one place they are saying like end poverty by 20 2030 because we are living in 2022 and it is an ambitious ambitious goal but we believe it can be done so like you have a claim uh, if you write a paragraph and if you read something then you need to find out what is the claim there in the paragraph and then what is the rebuttal then what are the evidences for example we have evidences then again rebuttal like we are saying like uh, uh, at one point you are saying like end extreme poverty in all forms by 2030 at the same time we have a fact like a uh, population uh, uh, like uh, like 8 million 800 million people around the world still live on less than 1.25 a day so that is and then we have a warrant so all such things like warrant is again like supporting your evidence or another information or extra information that is supporting your evidence so they must find out like this particular sentence is evidence this particular sentence is rebuttal this is claim so that's why once they write it then they will write keeping all such things in mind that they can do then the next thing uh, uh, the teacher can teach like once you read something then also raise certain questions so uh, what is like so you are reading this thing i am reading it for you this is sdg uh, 10 reduce inequality within and among countries so what it says uh, it's an old story the rich get richer and the poor get poorer the divide has never been starker we can and must adopt policies that create opportunities for everyone regardless of who they are or where they come from income inequality is a global problem that requires global solutions that means improving the regulations of financial markets and institutions sending development aid where it is most needed and helping people migrate safely so that they can pursue opportunities together we can now change the direction of the of the old story so they can raise certain questions like question 1 is there an end to the old story if yes then how Uh, and the third is like how can poor countries save their local economy from the financial regulations of developed countries is un working in direction to stop demographic change how can an individual connect themselves so these are the things these are the things that we can also uh, these are the things that teacher can teach like once you are reading something then also raise a question so like once you would know how to raise intelligent question then that is the starting point of learning so that is the thing that we need to remember and that is the thing that we need to uh, teach our student to raise intelligent question because most of the time students they do not know how to raise a question 
and if you do not raise the question then you can't understand anything the other thing is like uh, you can think that you are learning something but are you able to summarize it so let's say uh, we have like another sdg make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable and like we have one student let's say student a and the student a is summarizing this thing so uh, teacher must tell the student that in a summary facts and figures are not important but the gist is important they they summarize thing so as you can see like on the left hand side there are so many facts like years are mentioned then uh, figures are mentioned like 28 mega cities then 2 uh, 453 million people all those things are there but once you are summarizing it you are not mentioning all those thing you are just giving a gist of the entire thing and generally we know that summary is basically the one third of the actual size so what they will write people uh, people like to live in cities and therefore cities are becoming bigger uh, we can make cities sustainable by making human settlements inclusive safe and resilient we can involve people in urban planning and create good affordable public housing now it's like very general statements and easily understandable that is basically the part of summary another thing teacher can do uh, is like teacher can ask students like how to paraphrase this thing so like you have like S, uh, sd sdg uh, 11 make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable so again the same paragraph but you have now the paraphrasing and the crucial difference between a paraphrase and a summary is like in a paraphrase you must uh, cite like from where uh, you have uh, you have got that information at the same time you also mention facts and figure so let's say student b is writing about this that according to the undp report on sustainable development goal 11 the world's two thirds population will be living in cities by 2050 in two, uh, in 2014 28 cities were inhabiting 453 million population those cities are getting bigger are they providing sustainable living to people so again like we are raising this question so this is again like a, a type of argumentative writing that once you write something then you raise a rhetorical question this is not a question of inquiry but a rhetorical question you are raising and you are providing this answer we can make cities sustainable by creating good affordable housing also the states can invest in green spaces public transport and in urban planning decisions thus we can make cities centers of culture and business and life so these are the things that a teacher can do so this is uh, all about my presentation so how a teacher can take a text uh, to the class and uh, what are the things teacher need to take care of and how a student must be engaged so it is not like reading for the sake of reading but reading is is uh, transforming information into understanding that is the thing that, that we need to do so if someone has any question or doubt uh, please raise your question and doubt i'll be happy to answer okay well thank you very much with uh, an in a very impressive uh, session with you dr amitav related to your topic critical reading for sustainable development goals and what uh, you know uh, i'm so interested in uh, your way how you can uh, you know uh, try to combine between critical reading and uh, the the sdgs right prof i mean doctor okay. yes yes and uh, let me check some points if uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, the first uh, you're talking about initiating text uh, you try to combine uh, between critical reading and sustainable development goal and the second uh, the definition of critical reading so you are talking about close reading and careful reading right yes and uh, and uh, above all i mean beyond of that so this is talking about uh, how to get the clear understanding of the text and uh, the way how to read that so you can have a skimming scanning and in depth uh, reading and uh, in 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 that reading activity you, you mentioned us three steps the first is a uh, pre reading activity and the second is engaged reading activity and the last is post reading activity and uh, what is really interesting in this point is that in the pre reading activity you mentioned that uh, posing intelligent questions and you try to invite the students 
to think about himself, themselves, to think about their environment, their country, and bringing to the world. Wow, this is really nice. And uh, the last one in uh, in the, the engaged reading activity, you're talking about understanding the structure of the text, note-taking, and argumentative uh, reading. So you try to discuss, uh, to invite the students to give argumentation, right, related to the text. And the last one is talking about post reading activity. So you ask the student to, to do summary and to do the paraphrasing. But I missed the last point that you mentioned just now, uh, doctor, transforming uh, knowledge or information. Information, or transforming information into understanding. Okay, transforming information into understanding wow this is actually the main duty of the teacher if they want uh, if they uh, you know want to teach uh, reading well uh, really good and uh, uh, to give related uh, uh, related to sustainable development goals well dave everyone if you have questions to dr amitav uh, Fikram Bifedi, so I give you time to, uh, you know, to have uh, him questions. Let me check from the box. Can you share your uh, presentation here? Okay. So, Dr. Amitabh, so the participants uh, want your pity. Yes, yes, I will. Uh, afterwards, I will share. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, one so I give you time to, uh, you know, to to pose your questions related to critical reading uh, for sustainable uh, development goals. Uh, Dr. Uh, if uh, you know, well, I'm asking the question. Okay. So, uh, have you been teaching this? Uh, I mean, this this way of uh, reading. Uh, I'm teaching reading to your students. Your voice is breaking. I couldn't hear your question properly. Okay, check. Uh, uh, yeah. Have you practiced uh, this, I mean, this critical reading, uh, teaching critical reading to your students related to sustainable development goals? Yes. Uh, one, one, session, uh, one session I took with my PG students because they are writing dissertation, master's dissertation this time. And uh, most of the time, like what I uh, what I find, because we have uh, these are English students, so generally we have MA in English literature. And most of the time, uh, what I find, like uh, if they are working on a novel, then in place of analysis, we simply have uh, the paraphrase of the novel. So uh, this analysis part is actually missing. So uh, so uh, how to analyze? First, you need to raise question, then you can analyze certain thing. Otherwise, what we have the summary of the novel. And the summary, the paraphrase of the novel, the author said this, author said that. But why author said this? Why author said that? That is more important. So we need to change the question from what to why. So that is quite oh. important. So this, uh, this thinking process, like once you start questioning with how, why, that is more important because what is simply informative question. An informative question, like everyone knows, like someone wants to know, read the novel. But why author has said this? Why particular character is talking in such a manner? Why author has used this particular word? Or how you can relate this to, like you are reading a novel and you are analyzing a novel, but how that particular reading or novel is related to the global context? What is the implication of that? So okay. that is a thing like to connect the fiction with the real. That is quite important. So, 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 so you post two questions, two kind of question, uh, why and how? Yes. Oh, I think this is great because uh, by, by questioning how and why, so it can trigger the students to think True. and uh, to find out the answers, not textually, but can be. So they yes, can yes. Uh, be critical in finding uh, the answer. This is really great, doctor. Really great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So, uh, dear <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you have got questions to Dr. Amitav, uh, so I give you time to have. Okay. So here from Hardianti, uh, Dr. Amitabh, the question from uh, Ibu Hardianti, Herdianti. I'd like to ask how if the target students are in an undergraduate program, can you give us some tips? 
uh, yes like irrespective of the fact uh, irrespective of the fact whether students are uh, undergraduate or postgraduate teacher can slow the pace like the slow slow or the pace like a teacher can repeat certain things uh, 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 and like uh, Uh, if the teacher is taking one class for pg student then teacher can take two to three class for ug students to make them understand things so this is the thing like uh, but things are same like you need to what is the what is the goal of teaching the goal of teaching to make your student critical thinkers so if we are not making our students critical thinkers then i think like the entire teaching learning activity is futile because we are not creating robots we are creating critical thinkers who can raise certain things who will think about climate change who will think about humanities who will think about uh, like uh, how to save this planet so all such things are there so that is basically the goal so uh, sooner the better like if they learn critical thinking uh, early then it is fine but we must do these things uh, in in a classroom okay so uh, if i can uh, highlight your 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 answer is that so the teachers should lower the pace so try to adjust uh with uh, the students condition you mean okay true, great true. so uh, that's it the, the answer ibu hardianti that uh, the teacher should lower the pace try to adjust with the students condition that's uh, the great tips from dr amitab okay so i guess uh, because we are running out of the time we are going to moving on to the next uh, keynote speaker again dr amitab we fedi vikram thank you very much again for being with us if you have got closing remarks i give you time uh, i would like to thank the organizers particularly uh, dr muthmania because uh, she was the link between you and me and she was yeah. providing me all the information so i thank dr uh, she is our mother and, <laughs> and uh, so and i i also thank all the participants like uh, for their patience listening and i thank you moderator as well okay thank you very much uh, dr amitab vikram uh, dwifedi from uh, sri uh, you know uh, mata faisno devi university india well ladies and gentlemen we are moving to the next uh, I mean, cannot speaker, and I would like to invite uh, the next uh, moderator, Ibu Maina. So, is it the time for our dear Dindo? Uh, because just now we try to have, uh, you know, skip. Yeah, Ibu Santiana, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Ibu Santiana, are you there? Can you sing? Yeah, uh, you sing a song for us. <laughs> <laughs> not really and not in the other countries you still remember so about we, your uh, youtube channel please yes of course <laughs> but then it's no time for to talk about it today okay, okay, okay. Time. so we move forward to to the next invited speaker or back to the keynote speaker invited speaker dr andy asrifan are you there Because we still have two yes. uh, speakers. Have, uh, Mr. Mr. David Prodin. Yes, and yes. And also yes. Uh, uh, Prof. Muhammad Jafar. Yeah. So I think uh, with... Professor Muhammad, I think Professor Muhammad Jafar is, is not here. Uh, he is, okay. is still okay. in the meeting. Yes. All right. Yeah. So we will continue to the second invite yes. speaker. Right. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon again from Indonesia. Let's continue our agenda at the International Conference on Education, Technology and Social Sciences 2022 with the theme Human Capital in Facing New Paradigms of Industrial Revolution 4.0, which is held collaboratively by Patola Palala Foundation, Indonesian Education Charge Care Volunteers, Universitas al Arsia Mandar, Universitas Muhammadiyah Sindhana Rapang. IAIN Madura, Universitas Liwangi, IAIN Lexmawe, and State Universities of Makassar, Indonesia. Allow me have Santiana as the moderator for the second invited speaker. And then now we have uh, Mr. David De Preden from English Language Specialist Institute for Population and Social Research, Mahindal University, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, Mr. David, are you there? Of course. 
All right. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, before starting the presentation, I'd like to inform you the rules of the presentation. Uh, the first keynote speaker, uh, the invited speaker will have a maximum 25 minutes for the presentation. So please manage your time. And I will remind you if the time is mostly over. And then the second one is question and answer session will be done after the invited speaker presented the paper. And third, every audience can drop the uh, question in the chat box or you can uh, directly deliver the question by raising your hand literally. And I, as a moderator, will read the question to be answered and or I will mention the audience who deliver the question directly. The fourth, every audience are pleased to mute the microphone uh, during the presentation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let's invite our second invited speaker, Mr. David Deferdent, the Zoom world is yours. Okay, thank you, moderator, but I am very American. Oh, okay. I, have, I have my own timer. And to be honest, you don't need to read the, the questions. You can actually relax for the okay. next five <laughs> minutes because right. I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big boy. So yeah, relax for, for, right. the, next, for the next 25 minutes. You don't I have sure. to do anything. Yeah, right. you can. Yeah, you can you okay. can take the out. Zoom floor is uh, yours. May I please have permission to share my screen? Yes, of course. Uh, may I please have permission to share my screen? Uh, you have already able to share your screen, sir. Nope, it says, Host disabled participants. Um, so jadi can host Pak Haidar. Yes, I think okay, now no. you're co-hosting. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, great. Thank you so much, so much, so much. Uh, yeah. You, All right. You know, this, it's about this is, yep, got it. This is actually, uh, my goodness, this is actually my, what, almost 20th presentation this year. So, and this is my 200th, 230th presentation online. So I'm excited. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just going to speak very quickly about preparing graduates for uh, the uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0 through skills development. Now, uh, as you mentioned, I am the English language specialist for the number one university and the number one social research institute in this, on this side of Asia. Um, it's just a fact. My university is wonderful. I love it. It's just the best. And in my capacity, I am able to, I have freedom to do a lot of research and I have freedom to uh, visit companies and speak with a lot of people in different industries. Well, what I found is that most industries, just name it, name an industry. It doesn't matter, tra transportation industry, customer service, anything. These industries are telling me that the fresh graduates, you know, university graduates, are not ready for the real world. They are not trained. They are not developed. And I find that this is fairly similar in most Southeast Asian countries. Now, think, think about this. Thailand, Thailand currently has about, what, 67 million people. Currently, Indonesia has 275 million people. Now, think about Think about this. If, if, if Indonesians were, were, were really fully developed for international collaboration, international workforce, Indonesians would take over the world. Now, the Philippines, with 110 million people, there are about 10% overseas foreign workers, about 11 million people who, 11 million Filipinos who work outside of the country. Why, 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 why? Well, it's simple because they are developed. And the Philippines 
just as the same as South Korea and Japan. They, they saw the fourth industrial revolution coming from many years ago. So they, they develop people who are invited by international companies to work for these international companies, these global companies. Now, if you are developed, if you have soft skills and you have hard skills and you are developed, international companies will put out their hand and say, welcome, come work with us. You know, I have, I believe it or not, I have been to Indonesia, I am not exaggerating, about 60 times. Before, before the pandemic, I was going to Indonesia twice a month, three times a month. I have been to most of the 12,000 islands. I have been all over Jakarta, Bokor, uh, East Kalimantan, Balikpapan, Samarinda, uh, East Java, West Java, Aceh, Jambi, name it, I have been there. And I find that so many, so many students, so many students are just not ready. And the teachers, oh my goodness, the English teachers, Sorry, I'm not picking on you because Thailand is the same way, okay? English teachers, university lecturers. I say, hi, uh, hi, what do you teach? I, I teach English. Really? Uh, really? How long have you been teaching English? Oh, I teach English 20 years. Very good. Completely, un, completely unqualified to teach English, but yet they are one of the higher ranking lecturers or docents in the universities. So the teachers are, are, are unprepared, the teachers are unqualified, so the students are ill-prepared and unqualified. So how can, we make, how can we make everyone qualified? How can we make Indonesians how can we make Thais? How can, how can we make uh, Cambodians and Laotians ready for the global world or the global economy? Sorry, it's easy. I, I love, I, I love CTE. I love career and technical education. Now, okay, okay, okay. Everyone, vocational education, that means the student can't make it in a regular university. That means, that means the student is bad or they're not very trained or they're not very intelligent. No, that's not what it means. Just, just as the presenters before, every student is a different type of learner. Some students can, can handle true academic learning, sure, but some students, they are different type of learners and they are hands-on learners, or they are auditory or, auditory or visual learners. They are different type of learners. And we need, we need, we, I mean, the world, um, international, international companies, they need people who have both, both. Some academic prowess, some academic understanding, and, hands-on real world experience. Now, okay, we all know, we all know every major company out there offers internships for university students. And all these companies, I, I'm hearing something very similar across Southeast Asia. Oh, our students are just not responsible about the most they can do is make a PowerPoint or make copies or go get coffee. It's too much work to train them. They are not prepared. Well, it's the responsibility of the university to equip learners for a lifetime of workability. I didn't say employability, I said workability. So how can, how can we do that? And what are some issues that the world has now? Okay, we know, we know, everyone knows. 
The COVID-19 pandemic has just, my goodness, it has, it has destroyed global labor markets. It has just destroyed, and it has caused so much anxiety for, for graduates. Do you remember the first speaker? Prof said that, um, Prof, Prof said that the students, that they are empowered, even though, even though in some transmission type systems, some transmission education systems like Southeast Asia or some of the Western Asia countries where the teacher is the God of the classroom, the teacher is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent educator, you know, because the teacher, they are infallible. Well, those type of education systems do not produce productive global graduates because productive global graduates they have to be critical thinkers. And when a teacher is the, is the commander in chief of the classroom, the students, they're not able to really think and, and express. So the students, there's so much cost into their education, but they're not qualified for well-paying jobs because they can't think on their own. They can't think alone. The teacher has controlled them all their lives. So how can we change this? How can we, how can we prepare the students? How can we change the mindset of the teachers to be more accommodating, to really, really respect the different students? How can we help the teachers understand that, that men and women are equally valuable? that women are not second-class citizens, that, that women are just as, or oftentimes more capable than men to work in many industries. How can we help cultures and societies, education cultures, right? How can we help education cultures see the value of women, see the value of people with other, or people diverse? diverse individuals. Let's, let's leave it at that. Well, the thing is, we have to equally prepare everyone, equally prepare everyone to become competitive in a global job market. And, you know, the, the truth is, you should see it. I mean, you can even, even if you do not do any research, you can read the newspaper. And you know, you know, that there are labor shortages in, in, in industries that there were not labor shortages 20 years ago. You know, I have, I have friends, I have friends in Indonesia. They, they told me, I'm not going to tell you where they work, I'm not going to divulge any, per, any personal information, but they told me they make 500,000 rupees per month. That is their salary, 500,000. Or some make 2 million or 3 million rupees per month. What is that, 200 US dollars or 300 US dollars? And I tell them, my goodness, develop yourself, go work in the UK, go work in the US and make 10 times that and then support your family. But you know, they can't because they have TOEIC scores of 200 or they can't, I mean, they're, 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 the qualifications are limited, their experience is limited, their language skills are limited. Why? Because they were not developed in universities. Now, listen, I, I'm saying all this and, and I have, look, I have, Research, research to, to support what I am telling you. And I'm not picking on any one particular university. I'm not picking on any one particular nationality or culture. I'm just telling you this, this, this pandemic, not the COVID-19 pandemic, but the pandemic of not developing our future workforce is so prevalent in Southeast Asia that it's concerning. It, it really is concerning. So 
how can how can these high how can these high quality programs really help? Well, it's easy. It's very easy. You link link secondary and tertiary education courses or curriculum. Matter of fact, this morning I spoke with someone from one of the more prominent, one of the more, or I guess one of the better uh, secondary schools in Thailand. They are going to uh, a very well-known university in May. And this university is helping this high school tailor the curriculum to where the students, when they graduate from high school, they would be ready just to continue their education in university. So the, so the courses and the curriculum will be aligned. And the high school, this, this particular high school, they focus on hands-on work-based learning experiences. High school, high school. This high school, uh, they're sending their students, their 12th grade students, they're sending their 12th grade students to companies to do internships that are designed for university students. Again, let me say that one more time. This high school has and is preparing their 12th grade students to do internships in companies where the internships have only been available for university students because this high school is developing their high school students to be competent, responsible, and they are preparing them to face real world settings. And this is just amazing to me. I mean, it, it, just, it just blows my mind that someone, a, a, a high school is actually listening to the research. The research says that students must be prepared as early as possible. The truth is, the research really says that students should begin developing critical thinking skills in kindergarten. So what are, what are the four major skills that the, that the industrial 4.0 really needs? Well, graduates need personal skills. Yes, they do. They really do. They need, they need to understand communication and teamwork and they must have, they must have this professionalism and this motivation. But most of all, most of all, they must have integrity and adaptability, adaptability. Look, like I told you before, I have been all over Indonesia and I like to joke with, with my students. And I, I tell them, listen, you cannot continue to be Udik or Deso. You cannot continue to be Ndeso. You have to, you have to learn other languages. You have to be exposed to other religions and other cultures. And, and you have to be exposed to other genders and all these things that are different from what you know. You must become adaptable, adaptable to all these different societies and all these different life choices. If you want to survive in a global war, in a global, a global economy, that doesn't mean you have to agree or disagree. No, in a professional setting, your religion stays home. Your preferences stay, stay home. In a professional setting, everyone is equal. Okay. And the students have to become adaptable to survive. And I have had so many students say, well, I can't work in a place with this or this or this or this. Well, okay, sorry. If you're not confident in yourself, then you're not going to be successful because you should be able to work anywhere with anything and feel secure in your own self. That's being adaptable. And I also tell the students that, you know, you need to develop thinking skills. Critical thinking is so important in the international community. Critical thinking. 
if you want to work in an international company, you must, you must have problem solving abilities and you must be able to make decisions on your own. You must be semi autonomous. And if you come from a transmission type education system to where the teacher is the god of the classroom, you're not going to have decision making ability. You will not have problem solving skills. You will not have critical thinking skills. What, did, what does that mean? You will not survive in an international environment. So as educators, we need to help our students develop these, these skills. And yes, absolutely. We need, we need to help with applied learning. Applied learning is fairly simple, real, real world skills. So yes, I know I have five minutes left. I know. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, these digital skills. Okay, hey, I am, I am just over 50 years old. When you ask me to do something digitally, I can do it, but it takes me a, a little while. You ask a 12 year old kid to do something digitally, it's finished in seconds, seconds. But, but the young people have very little workplace technology experience. So universities really, really need to incorporate hands-on learning. So last, very last, business fundamentals, industry knowledge and technical skills. If, if a graduate, want, or sorry, if a university student, if they want to enter into an industry, it's the responsibility of that university to help that student gain these skills while they are still in the university. Because only theoretical education will not help the graduate survive. They need both theoretical and practical, mostly practical. Help our students survive. Help them break these cycles. Help them, help them overcome the challenges that they face every day. Help them expand and explore. Help them overcome. Help them grow. Be part of their success. Be part of their success. You know, I say this every day. I've done so many of these presentations, and I always call out to teachers and educators, be part of your students' success. Please, your employer should have superior, so your employee should have superior technical skills than you. If they don't, it means you hired the wrong person. You know, I've been in Southeast Asia for a long time. And most of the time, if you are more intelligent or more knowledgeable than your boss, they fire you or they try to destroy you. And that's opposite to the real world. So help your students become more intelligent than you. Help your students gain more knowledge. Help your students become better English users and help your students stand out among the crowd. Help them be that focal point. Help them be the, the choice, the choice for global companies. So this is me, my time is up. And please, you can scan the QR code if you would like to contact me. Sorry, I do not have social media. I have more important things to do in life than post stupid dance videos on TikTok or take photos of my food and let everyone see it. I think that's a complete waste of brain power. <laughs> so, okay, there is my time. You have had time to scan the, the QR code. I hope you contact me and I'm stopping sharing now. So, okay. All right. <laughs> actually, you, you have a three minute laugh for the presentation. Yeah, but... before. <laughs> okay. But then uh, really, really, I think it's a very, uh, very good insight and awesome presentation. To the honest, I'm so surprised and shocking when you are 
telling the truth about uh, the condition, our condition in Indonesia. And you state uh, really, um, what's that? Details of uh, on it. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for, for wake helping me, helping <laughs> us. So, uh, right. Uh, no. Sorry, uh, actually, I see, who, who is that? Asthma? Asthma, A-S-M-A? In some places, yes. vocational education, is meant for the low achievers. Yes, yes. Ab absolutely, and that's horrible. That is that is such a disgusting mindset. We need people to practice vocational education. What I am proposing is mixing the two. Having tertiary institutions actually mix in some vocational education, okay? Because yes, but strictly vocational education that's meant for low achievers, bad students, poor, poor people. But you know, the truth is, without, with, without people practicing vocational education, your car would not be fixed, your air conditioner would be broken, and your plumbing would not work. So, okay, I'm finished. That's true, quite true. <laughs> right, I will invite the audience to ask the question to Mr. Paradin. Uh, if David. any of the oh David okay David um, David okay yeah. Pat David okay if you yeah. have any question to Pat David please you can raise up your hand or you can directly ask him oh and please feel feel free to contact me on WhatsApp yeah. uh, yes I would love to hear from you really would. Right, I still trying to to find out who are uh, want to ask you, but then before that, may I <laughs> ask some question to you <laughs> before Please, another yeah. audience? Okay, uh, it's very interesting when you are uh, telling us about the the condition, but then my my question is how uh, we can make our students be proud or be confident to speak English because it is quite hard to 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 teach her to make a student's um, confidence to speak mm. English. Oh, maybe you have um, wonderful questions. strategies, okay, or a techniques. Yeah, sure. You know, actually, so, actually, uh, two things. My master's thesis, my research was done in Indonesia. I actually researched. Teacher, teacher development in Indonesia. So that's why I have such insight. Uh, number two, we just did a very, large, a very large project here, research about foreign language anxiety. Foreign language. Foreign language anxiety. Okay. That's right. Foreign. Your question. Foreign, foreign language anxiety. Anxiety. Yes. F F L A. Foreign yes. language anxiety. anxiety. And you know, we found, we, we found uh, most, most, most studies, they use, they, use quantitative, they use quantitative data. We did a fully qualitative study. We just did interviews and it took us a long time. And we found that, uh, the, that the one of one of the main factors why students are afraid to speak is because the teacher is very aggressive when the student makes mistakes. The teachers are very aggressive, um, and and the classmates bully. The classmates bully. So um, you want to know how to make students more comfortable? Well, make a safe learning environment. Make an environment to where the students can make mistakes. And when they make mistakes, you celebrate the mistakes. Celebrate. Try not to punish the mistakes. When, when they make mistakes, what I do, I said, when my students say, well, the scenario, I say, scenario, scenario. Oh, scenario. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you. Because, you know, English is not their first language and they are going to mispronounce. They are not going to use the correct verb tense. As long as they are comprehensible and intelligible, 
No one cares. Really, the truth is international companies, they just want, they just want people with reasonable pronunciation, reasonable use of vocabulary, and an, an ability to listen to passengers or customers or clients. So if the students know that they don't have to be me, if they know they don't have to sound like me, yes, of course, then they would that. relax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most of the 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 teacher puts the students to to pronounce the word like the native. So that's why they they're afraid to speak. That's horrible. <laughs> these teachers. Oh, these teachers yeah. are it's horrible. It's happening. It's happening in Korea, bro. Yeah, but what if it's happening? They wanna, they wanna be like a native when they, they yes. ask the English. But, but then no, we we know but, about the the English, the English is now, yeah. And the truth is, the teachers do not sound like me. Yeah, of course, <laughs> because oh, we didn't. You know that the teachers <laughs> yeah. do not sound yeah. like me. Yeah, because it's quite hard to, to, to what's that? To, to sound like native. But you don't want to because the Indonesian <laughs> accent is beautiful. The Indonesian accent makes you unique. It's okay to have your accent. Yeah. Don't right. change that. Okay. Don't change that. It's beautiful. As long as you understand my word and then my speak, so it's okay. Is it it? Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, who is that? Nasira? <laughs> Nasira Tun Tunisa. Uh, Nasira Tunisa. Now nah, looks like yeah. It look it looks like Nasira was slapping her husband. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Good okay. for her. Good for uh, her. Then, <laughs> Jeez. And then okay. have the other types. Let's just appreciate the world English. Yes, I I couldn't agree more yes. with you. Yes, come on. Yeah. You All know, right. I, I spent. I spend too much time dealing with students who cry. I can't sound like you. Well, I'm not like you. I have I one. Like you an, an, I have one of uh, an alternative when the student uh, they uh, uh, don't wanna to speak in the uh, in the classroom. I ask them to record themselves by video, and then they speak whatever they they enjoy the place, and then upload it into the YouTube. So this is one of, uh, so all of all of the students will be uh, speak even we know that uh, they are still very uh, low in doing interaction. Like sure. their, uh, their gesture, their mimic, their face, still like a robot when they are talking, yeah. but we do really appreciate, oh, but we do really appreciate they cannot be doing this progress uh, with this uh, situation. So we must appreciate them. Even they get the zero, they don't, <laughs> they don't uh, speak. Uh, so that's why um, I think this is one of the best choice if you wanted to uh, engage your student more in speaking. Uh, let them to speak by themselves alone and record themselves. Yeah, thank uh, you for Invite me. <laughs> invite me to your university. Let me speak with your students and let me speak. <laughs> yeah. Let me speak with your lecturers. Yeah. All right. So we can invite you later. Yeah. David. Sure. So so I, I will contact you for this. <laughs> All right, uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic. So I guess as a, as I say, you know, a, uh, yes. Dr. Robert, yes. okay. As time is over, I'm so sorry for that. Thank you very yes. much for your sharing. It's very, very good insight and then a very uh, awesome presentation. So please give applause to him, the audience. Okay, thank you very much. And then uh, Dr. Andy Asripan, are you there? Uh, he is not here because uh, uh, he had electrical problem. All right, so, so we move to close what should we do? Yeah, uh, we can close this matter. All right. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, from the first half to the last program, we have done fluently. We would like to say thank you to all keynote speaker and also the invited speaker 
and all of the audience for participation. Hopefully the presentation will give benefit us. And now we come to the closing session. Um, Eva Santiano from Siloam University, from the request of my heart as the moderator today, would like to express my apology for the inconvenience during the session. And on behalf of the committee, I would like to thank you all for making time to join us here today. I wish you all the pleasant days. And then it's time for me to say goodbye. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And don't forget to join our international conference tomorrow. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank, thank you, for you David. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. So, uh, Santiana, thank you so much. So we are going to close our meeting today. And Terima kasih. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sama-sama, Bu. Sama-sama. Sama-sama. <laughs> yeah. I want to close uh, uh, representing Dr. Randy because uh, he have electrical problem right now at uh, his place at uh, uh, his university. So allow me to close our meeting today. Uh, before I close, I want to say thank you very much to all of the participants uh, from 11 countries and all of the uh, presenters that tomorrow uh, you are going to present, uh, have uh, your session to present in your uh, research. And then um, thank you to all of the keynote speakers. I, I see that uh, Professor Dr. Ahtem uh, Zelilov is still here. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, to accept our invitation, and then you are here to share your uh, very insightful uh, presentation. And then um, thank you very much uh, to the um, Professor Tarek Ilyas, uh, our Professor Muhammad Basri Jafar, perhaps still uh, on meeting right now. And then um, to all of the invited speakers today, uh, Dr. Amita Vikram, Dewi Fedi, and the uh, Mr. David Pradin. So tomorrow uh, we still have our uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, invited speaker, uh, Dr. Pan Gabriel Fang from China, and then uh, David uh, uh, Rodan. Uh, what is the uh, yeah, Prodan Mah Mahbud Ibn Sharad from Bangladesh, and also engineering. Engineering Muhammad Mutaba Asad. So uh, still more, we have three uh, invited speaker for tomorrow to uh, share their knowledge. And also to all of the presenter, uh, there are 20 presenter. Uh, besok Bapak Ibu, kita akan start jam 10 pagi. Jadi uh, mohon dipersiapkan presentasinya. To all of the uh, participants tomorrow, we will start at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Indonesia uh, time, um, this is uh, Singapore time, or uh, how to say, Indonesia Timur ya. Jadi kita mulai besok jam 10 waktu Indonesia Timur, and then after that, uh, we, we will stay, uh, after your presentation, we will stay to uh, listening our uh, uh, invited speaker, there are three, Dr. Uh, Professor Fan Gabriel Fang from China, and then uh, Podian Mahbud Ibn Sirat from uh, Pakistan and uh, engineering Muhammad Mutaba also from uh, Pakistan. So thank you very much and congratulations to all of us. And then see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good luck for you all. Terima kasih, Ibu. Silahkan bisa lihat. Yeah.